This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Did you know February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month? Every February across the United States, teens and those who support them join together for a national effort to raise awareness to teen dating violence. Dating violence is more common than many people think. One in three teens in the US would experience physical, sexual, or emotional abuse by someone they're in a relationship with before they become adults. And nearly half, 43% of college women reporting experiencing violent and abusive dating behaviours. By joining together every February, we can spread awareness and stop dating abuse before it starts. You can show your support on February 11th by wearing orange and posting on social media with a hashtag orange for love. For more information, you can go to www.breakthecycle.org or www.lovethisrespect.org or you can contact your local shelter agency that helps victims of abuse. Find our agency on Facebook, Freedom House in Weatherford, Texas and Crossroads Youth Programme in Weatherford, Texas, or you can contact John Enright at jreezymin on Twitter or email john at freedomhousepc.org and see how they can help you or get you more information. Hello everybody and welcome to the Super J Cast. I'm John Labraham, joined by Damon McDonald. Damon, like that Twitter is awash with people talking about a superb owl. What is what is this superb owl? What's going on? I don't I'm not familiar with the superb owl. Uh there is a super bowl. Maybe they're just saying superb owl to get away from uh copyright. Oh, yeah, you're right. I've I've misread it, sorry. It is a Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I didn't watch it, Damon, because last year a colleague of mine tricked me into watching it and it's two hours of my life I'll never get back. So uh, can you please give me your hot take so I can copy those opinions and pass them off as my own? Yes, absolutely you can. Um, Chiefs win. Um, it was uh, tied going into halftime. So it was a close game. Um, I, th- I thought it was a pretty exciting game. It wasn't uh, boring, that's for sure. Um, Chiefs win. Uh, Chiefs are a little bit more... I probably probably say they were more favorite, but even going into the game, like looking at the line, it was only like a one and a half point spread um, between the Chiefs and the 49ers. Um, I think a lot of people were rooting for the Chiefs just because they seem to be the sexy team. Um, I don't like their head coach, Andy Reid, in the sense that I had to deal with him for how many years? 10 years, seven years, eight years, 12 years. I don't know. A lot of years in Philadelphia when he was the head coach. And, uh, uh, he was just, he was just always, he, I don't know. He was like, well, one, he was a grouch in the media, just terrible. And two, he like led teams that I physically hated, <laughs> you know, like players that I just despised and team that just, uh, I don't know. I just never could get, I never liked any of those teams. And I actively, like, just really despised covering those teams. So he got his ring. He got his championship. Kansas City's happy. And uh, if you're a Chiefs fan, you've waited 50 years. So congratulations to you. All right. Speaking of sexy team statement, Mark White Flame wants to know, who in LIJ is the best at manscaping? (laughs) Tell us who, Damon. We want to know who. Yeah, we want to know. We want to shave. We we want. Um, that's a difficult question because I've I've yet to see any of their uh, their uh, pubic areas, their pubic region. Okay, Use your imagination. I want a full breakdown, full analysis of all six members. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pun intended. Right. Okay, right. Uh, well, look, they are. I'll tell you. Probably they could probably get the most benefit from a nice subscription to Manscaped. I'll tell you that, right? I just they just seem like a, a team that doesn't really. I'm not going to say that they don't care about their personal hygiene. I bet you Bushi. I bet you Bushi's probably well groomed down there. And I, but I would say uh, a guy like um, <sighs> who would be the least groomed in L I J. You right, like Naito, he's he's probably going a bit bald down there. The hair's starting yeah. to fall out, but oh. he's sort of styling the pubes in such a way to try and cover up the bald spot. Cover up. That's a good. That's, yeah, 
I don't know if if that if a bald spot for 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 the pubis area uh, is is a big concern with the gentleman, but um, <laughs> Evil's probably dyed his. Maybe yeah, his braids is now and then when he's feeling fancy. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely braided. Um, I think I think Hiromo has probably got the the the, the most unkempt, uh, but yet still red highlights. Um, yeah, yeah, he's still it's still he's still got a, a touch of flair in there, right? Um, Bushi, I think I would say the best because Bushi's oh, well, Sonata, not bad, but I I think that if you look at his, the 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 above the shoulders. That could be anything. I could. Be, that's that's probably the biggest wild card. I but but I bet he's wearing a fashionable hat. <laughs> his, cock <laughs> is, his, his cock has nice, sunglasses. Yeah, right. A nice a nice summer chapeau uh, uh, for uh, his his dangling member. Yes, uh, but Bushi, I would say, is probably well groomed. He's probably familiar with uh, the the sensation that's sweeping not only. My nation, but your nation and all nations. Um, I don't know if they ship everywhere, but eh, check it out on their website. It's manscaped.com, Joel. Maybe have you have you heard of manscaped.com? They yeah, I was gonna say that the nation that I live in has probably got other things to worry about at the moment, but <laughs> I, I'm sure once that issue is dealt with, I can right. kind of bring it up to, to the agenda. But they they've got their hands full at the moment. But yeah, sorry, please continue. Well, I mean we do too. I mean we've got a, a whole a whole slew of things uh going on, but but yeah, but Manscaped. Uh, hygiene's important. Hygiene's important, right? How can you? I mean, that, I think that'd be the first step, right? I mean, think about it. Think about it, what you do every single day, right? Before you uh, mold the youth uh, that you do, Joel, and before I, I don't know what the fuck I do, really, that's important. But uh, before what anybody does, you know, if you're on the construction site, if you uh, are in the office, if you uh, are leading. Uh, your troops, your your team. The first step is what you you you, you get a you know cup of coffee or something or uh, something that will help wake you up, and then it's into the shower you go. Right, you clean yourself off, refreshing yourself. Well, that, that includes you know an, a, 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 a mid range area, Joel, and maybe uh, an area that gets overlooked by many. Right. So now here you go. Here's your manscaped.com who solves the problem for you with fine grooming products for that area that A, could probably use some extra attention, right? Uh, and B, does it easily and uh, efficiently and you smell like a million bucks. You smell great down there. And that's important because at the end of the day, Joel, at the end of the day, when you finally connect with that loved one and you finally uh, see the love of your life and uh, you feel a little romantic, you know you're prepared. You know you're set. You know you're ready to go. Why? Because Manscaped.com took care of you with the grooming products, right? Shaved it down, the clippers, right? 2.0, no nicks, no cuts. Also that fine uh, deodorant to make you smell Wonderful. All day long keeps you dry. That's important, right? So again, it's got you covered all day long. It's manscaped.com and you can get it for 20% off, Joel. Can you imagine that? 20% off and free shipping for at Manscaped. Use the code. That is ludicrous, Damon. It I, is. They are throwing away money. It is. Uh the Super J, uh, Super J Cast, right? Just Super J Cast. Type that in uh, to that little bar up on Manscaped and get that code twenty percent off. Free shipping at Manscaped.com. It's simple. You love them, right, Joel? Yeah, I haven't had the pleasure of being able to try their goods yet, but what? rest assured, as soon as I can get my hands on some, yeah, I'm telling you, it's going ahead. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I mean, I say, I say this and we say jokey things, but I use it and have used it and I find it to be fantastic. Damon approved. Damon approved. Uh, and the missus too. <laughs> wink, wink. So, yeah, I mean, listen, it's a, it's a no brainer. You got to, you got to make sure you're cleaned up down there. You got to make sure you're smelling nice. And what better way to do it than with manscaped.com? Go to manscaped.com, 20% off free shipping. Use the code SuperJCast and, and really, Change your life. Change your life, 
right? Because I guess you got a little swagger, you get a little confidence, you get a little, uh, you know you're taken care of well down there. You know it's going to be a pleasure for your partner to uh, do all the things they do best down there. You utilize their skills uh, to take care of you. So, manscaped.com, 20% off. Use Super JCast as the code. Uh, easy peasy, as they say in the pro wrestling world. Take care of them. Manscaped, we love you, and we appreciate all that you do for us. You guys take advantage of this offer. It doesn't last long. It ain't going to last long. So get in on it, manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. Let's dig into the news, Damon. And this one is not directly related to New Japan, but I wanted to get your thoughts Uh on it anyway. Uh So there was a big story in the pro rest scene where Pro Wrestling Noah was sold by Lidette Entertainment to Cyber Agent, which is a group that owns the other wrestling organization, DDT, Dramatic Dream Team. And the wider story here is that World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE, were in talks to purchase Noah and Stardom, but obviously Bushi Rhodes purchased Stardom from Rossi Ogawa late last year, and Cyber Agent has now come swooping in to acquire Noah, leaving WWE without a clear path to opening a promotion in the Japanese wrestling market. So how do you think, if at all, this might impact, affect New Japan or impact the landscape of the Japanese wrestling scene? Yeah, um, I, to me, it, it just puts it on delay because we all know that that is an end goal. And again, we're talking about NXT Japan here, right? Yeah, it's yeah. inevitable. I think so, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. Um, I know that they've had had a lot of bumps in that in that journey to to make happen, um, even stuff internally in their own organization with letting go two high end executives um, just recently on the same day. So I'm sure that might have a a, a small hiccup in those plans because they got to take care of stuff in house. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think NXT Japan is, is a goal of theirs. And I, I do I like the fact that each and every one of those promotions or, you know, like, you know, get straight up the street with that. You know, we're, we're going to do our own thing. I will say the one thing that troubles me is that it feels like, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but in my personal experience, I would say it it could become a bad thing very quickly is when you just have two or three or four big corporate entities owning all these different promotions. And it feels like they're, they're all getting picked up right by these big companies. Now on the plus side, it's okay. The idea of an influx of money and an influx flux of resources and, uh, you know, these are these are big companies that are buying these wrestling promotions. Um, but you do have to wonder you know, how much involvement they'll have or um, not again, not to say that they will have a say in the end product, but just more along the lines of organizational and structure and people that they bring in and, and just what changes that means to to a product. But when you get, you know, four or three, or how many of these big companies owning all the pro wrestling companies, and I'll say all the pro wrestling companies, and I'll say the major pro wrestling companies in Japan, Um, and I'll put, you know, DDTs in there, and I'll put Noah's in there, and the named ones, you know, the ones that everybody recognizes. I just don't know what that does to the two at the end of the day, that independent spirit, and that, um, that idea of, Noah has its own feel and DDT has its own feel and stardom has its own feel. And, um, you know, whomever, what, you know, if it's Basara or if, if, if it's, uh, big Japan you know, or new Japan or, you know, every promotion seems to have its own flavor, its own pockets of fans. And I, and I enjoy that about Japanese pro wrestling. And I really want it, want that to be diluted and watered down and, and made to feel like it's a, pawn on this corporate chessboard if that makes any sense do you think Bushiro might be looking to acquire a second men's pro rest company now that cyber agent have done that um i've heard nothing 
to to indicate that, but I mean, they bought they had DDT and they bought Noah. I I, I still don't think that they're, you know, profitability and 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 business wise and all the, I I don't see that those even those two together beating out the 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 business end of New Japan. Um so it's not like Noah and DDT are now going to run fucking dome shows or uh you know do consecutive nights at Budokan or anything like that. I don't know. I don't know if it would be worth the effort for New Japan. Like what what would be the benefit of them buying say and again I'm just throwing out a name. What would be the benefit of them buying Big Japan? I guess it would be kind of self defense, uh, self preservation mechanism for a company like Big Japan to prevent them from being swallowed up by WWE. Because, you know, if you take the example of Noah, they admitted that they were in serious financial trouble. But in spite of that, they still said no to WWE because there was obviously something about that that they found disagreeable. Yeah. And that's, you know, that you, you got to, if you're looking at it from maybe a business perspective, you might want to say, that oh, was a stupid move. <laughs> Just sign the paper. But you do have to appreciate, I don't know if pride is the word I'm looking for, but the fact that they had the, the guts to be like, to walk away from an offer like that, knowing full well that financially they could probably use it. Um, yeah, so that's what I was thinking. There might be a situation where some of these independent companies might be looking around thinking like, shit, help us, quick. Uh, a big Japanese company come and buy us before WWE come and make us an offer we can't refuse because we'd rather not sell out to them. Right. All right. Uh, and I think with that revelation with Noah, I mean, I think a lot of those promotions are in that same bucket, right? Uh, I would put you know, all Japan and, and big Japan and, you know, all of them are probably in, in, if not same, I would say similar financial buckets, right? It's not like all of those promotions are, are tripping over themselves, you know, selling out buildings left and right. And the, the money's just rolling in. I'm sure it's a, it's a, a weekly struggle to kind of make sure that the books are in line with where they need to be. And, and which is kind of, you know, every time somebody leaves somewhere, uh, you know, when I say like, uh, and again, we'll just use like Harper in, in WWE, you know, when he, his contract expires, then it's everybody. Well, wouldn't it be great if he goes here? Wouldn't it be great if he goes there? And okay. Yeah. From a fantasy booking perspective, that would be wonderful. But you know, when they start whipping out names like Noah and all Japan and, you know, and it's like, well, how are they going to pay for these people? Right. That, that, that would, I mean, maybe a one show possibly, but you know, it's like they don't have, I don't think they have the cash for this. Um, again, my biggest fear, Joel, is and again I understand the idea of a big company coming in and now you have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to doing things hopefully but, it's, but here's the thing too Joel it's not like a company comes in and just starts throwing around cash right it's really it's, I mean it's a business it's not like, it's not a, a, a philanthropist you know coming in with you know bags of money saying okay go sign whoever you want that, that's really not how it works. They're there to stabilize a company, right? They're, or at least, you know, stabilize losses and 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 quickly duct tape holes that are, you know, spilling out water. They're not there to just go in and just because they have the money doesn't mean they're gonna gonna come in to the offices of Noah and say. Okay, you know, sign every free agent available and and book the dome. You know, that's not how it works. The idea behind it of uh, this is a company that has plenty of money and the assets are there. Yeah, that's a wonderful concept, but in reality, it, that's really not the case. It's it's not it, it's they're there to buy it and keep it and and somehow make it profitable, and a lot of times that means cutting first and then pumping in money. So, 
you know, if I'm a Noah fan, I got to look at this w- with a little bit of, okay, it, it's going, it, it's uh, hopefully eventually it helps us. But in the beginning, realize that again, this is not somebody just coming up with a dump truck full of money and dumping it in the middle of the ring. It's it, it, they're there to look at things with a very critical eye and see where they can cut first before they invest more. Just a little hypothetical for you, Damon. You are, uh, have a lot of close friends who are big fans of All Japan. And again, this is just something I've made up. It's a, a made-up scenario. What do you think would upset the All Japan fans more, being purchased by Bushiroad or being purchased by WWE? WWE. WWE. I mean, at least the, my, the, 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 the fans that I know that are like, you know, American and Australian and, and, and from Great Britain and... Um, I would I would definitely say WWE. Um, at least Bushi Road has, you know, it, it's a Japanese company, um, so there is that feel of keeping it, you know, in house. I I think I I I think they would be physically ill if if it were Vince and company that came in and, and bought all Japan. Let's move away from Bushi Road and talk about. Ibushi's road to recovery. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you like that segue? Huh? That's why we're the pros, baby. So uh, we found out that Ibushi has been suffering from something called Mallory Weiss syndrome, also known as a gastroesophageal laceration syndrome, which is bleeding from a laceration in the mucosa at the junction of the stomach and esophagus, which sounds really nasty. It's apparently a complication that can occur when you have. I believe it was type 1 influenza that he had. But he tweeted out yesterday, um, this is in Japanese, so I'm using Google Translate, but he's able to move his body again. But he says, it doesn't move as expected. The axis is blurred. I can't give my best. Uh, let's go back to the old training to see if connection between the head and the nurse of the body is bad. And he's included some videos of him hitting the uh, heavy pads and another video of him doing a handspring backflip Thing. It's a very athletic gym. He looks fine by the videos, but maybe it might be a while before we see him in action again. All right, it's a, that's a that's a that's a pretty uh, it's a pretty long lasting virus that man has had. I remember talking to the great uh, Nicole Booz Leprechaun on our Discord. Obviously, a big Kota Obushi fan. And I and I think I feel a like scholar, a, Kota Ibushi scholar, scholar. Yeah, she has her PhD yeah. in Stardust, uh, not Stardust, uh, Golden Star. Uh, I'm always offended her. Um, we were going back and forth, and you know, I, f- I felt like it, was, it had to be over a week ago where I was like, he's got to be recovering from this by now, right? Um. So yeah, I mean. But here's the thing, though. I mean, and, and you, listen. Speaking of which, you know, you're right in the uh, the core of uh, the uh, was it coronavirus. Is, is that what they're calling it, Joel? You're right in the you're right in the right in the epicenter. The the you're you're right. No, there. I'm not. I'm not you're, near the epicenter at all. You're right next I'm to it. You're sitting. Me, there, there, there's a giant germ right next to you. You could interview a germ right now. <laughs> well, as one of my colleagues said, I'm not flying back into that petri dish. <laughs> And, and for context, Shaman has about, in, this is a city of about four and a half million, and there's 18 confirmed cases. Right. Right. Petri uh, dish. <laughs> Come on. Joe, Joe was really angry at the Western media uh, for blowing this uh, thing. Um, oh, yeah. The, the coverage has been disgusting and racist, and I make no apologies for that. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> I better not get on this soapbox. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but, but again, you're in the, you're uh, right there, uh, and so you you are our you are our, our uh, reporter on the street, and you are our medical expert. You've now become a medical expert um, in all things viral. So, um, wh- what is what is your estimated time? for Kota Ibushi to return from his particular ailment, Dr. Joel Abraham. Given that he is some kind of superhuman, Dragon Ball Z, saiyan character with uh, sub, not subhuman, superhuman recovery skills, like Wolverine from the X-Men, uh, I think <laughs> he'll probably be back for New Japan Cup. I expect him to be raring to go by the time that tournament rolls around. 
Yes. Uh, do you think he'll be on any of the road shows? He probably wants to, but I think it would be wise for him to maybe sit those out. Okay. It's a little bit longer. So we won't see him on any uh, the uh, anywhere in Osaka, is, is what you're trying to tell me. Uh, he's not booked. He's not, not going to make an appearance, right? right? Not going to make an appearance. Oh, no, sorry. He is. He is. Sorry. No, I'm totally oh. wrong. He he is scheduled for the third match, an uh-huh. eight-man tag with uh, Tanahashi, Finley, and Juice against Bullet Club. So, okay. I'm just saying, is he, is he scheduled for these Korakuans? Korakuan. Korakuan, as I'm told, is how to pronounce it. I say um, Korakuan, and, and I will butcher everything in, in this on this podcast. It's almost become a gimmick where I can't pronounce words. Uh, no, he's not on the Korakuans, but he's he's on the schedule for New Beginning in Osaka. But it's an eight-man tag, so how much would you really need to do in an eight-man tag? But then again, right. it's Ibushi, so you know what he's like. He's carrying all match. <laughs> he's in there 15 minutes. Um, Drop me on my fucking head, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> right. uh, it'll make me feel better. A little looser than mucus. Um, yeah. I don't, I, I, here's the thing. And again, who knows? I don't. I don't know. Is 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 this? I would assume not only is it for him, but at a certain point, there's got to be some concern about being contagious, right? And but I think we're. I think we would be well past that point at this point, right? Yes. Um, yes. So I think this Mallory yeah. Wise thing is is a not contagious. It's something that will is a a side effect of getting the flu itself. Okay, so there we go. All right, so then uh, eight man tag. He just takes it easy, you know. Maybe gets you know stretch it out a little bit. Um, take some notes think... from Maccabee. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, right. right, he'll do, he'll give you the ins and outs of taking a night off. Uh, yeah, just just watch this. Watch, watch this tape. Tag in, lariat. Tag out. Go home. <laughs> right, stand on the apron. Don't stand on the apron. <laughs> don't don't even don't even exert yourself to get up on the apron. Just hang out at ringside. Grab a beer. Don't do the ha 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 bit because that's going to strain your, your esophagus. So just lip sync yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, right. But there's no noise coming out of his mouth. Um, yeah, grab a beer at ringside. I'm sure somebody will have a, a beverage because you want to stay hydrated, right? Just Zima. Sit. Zima, right? Right. They're they're delicious. And just um, just hang out. That's all you got to do. Just show up, look cute, look like, you know, get those abs all uh, glistened up, hop in that ring, you know, let them uh, do the ring introduction, and then that's it. (laughs) You're done for the night. Uh, Easy peasy, as uh, we're saying today. Easy peasy. Next note is from Wrestling Observer. Chris Jericho tried to get Will Ospreay to take some AEW dates and do a program with him for the AEW title in the US between Japan tours. But Ospreay is 100% loyal to New Japan right now. So that is from Wrestling Observer newsletter. What do you make of that? Sounds like Dave had a good time on the cruise is what it sounds like to me. <laughs> he got a lot of people yapping at him. Uh, I don't doubt that. Um, look... <laughs> But here's the thing. I don't know. Like, if I'm New Japan, do I want Chris Jericho hopping around trying to make dream matches on a fucking boat um, during my my big show? I, You know what I mean? Like, if that is a, at all accurate, doesn't he have to kind of be like, I don't know. It just seems like going into somebody's house and... Uh, you know, complaining about what's on TV or the cooking. <laughs> you know, it just seems a little rude. <laughs> Trying to talk their wife into, you know, doing a bit of swinging or something. <laughs> well, that's pretty hard. Um, you know, but you know what I mean. It's just like, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I, again, it's it's. I'm. I, I'm. We all know. We don't all know, but we're assuming that you know Jericho is talking to Dave over a, a Shirley Temple or two. Because um, Dave doesn't a bit, drink. A bit, a bit of the bubbly, Damon. A bit of the bubbly. I don't think. I don't, I don't think Dave drinks. I, I think Dave is uh, a non-alcoholic kind of guy. Um, anywho, but I'm sure that there was some discussion, and I'm sure that you know, that in conversation, it was brought up. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's done a lot more than than what we. Or you know, you're in a locker room and you're chatting about, and somebody's saying, "Hey, how's it over here? And what's this about? And you know, hey, that looked like fun. And what's you know, what's going on here? And 
you know, in conversation. And I mean, who wouldn't want Will Ospreay? You know, I mean, if, if the opportunity is there. So I'm sure, you know, it kind of I wouldn't be surprised if it was something as innocent as Jericho saying, yeah, you know, we'd love to have you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and now it's turned into, uh, you know, Jericho trying to steal Will Ospreay for extended tours for AEW. Um, Ken, I mean, I know you mentioned Will says he's 100% loyal to New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm going to ask a question of you. Two part. One, do you think New Japan Pro Wrestling would care if Will Ospreay showed up and did uh, a handful of dates for AEW if it didn't conflict with any New Japan commitments? And B... Uh, is would that be a good thing or a bad thing? Yes, I think they would mind because anything like that, they would want the favor to be reciprocated and right. they would want to be able to use some AEW guys in return f- for some of their US dates, which they can't do. So I think the fact that AEW talent is excluded via their contracts from working in the States for other companies means that I think deals like that are off the table for New Japan talent. Yeah. And and really, that's really the, 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 the gist of it. It's, it is not a, uh, as we like to say in, in America, uh, a, a, qu- a quid, is it quid pro quo, uh, a this for that. Uh, that is, that's, that's important, right? Because again, if, if they're sending over Will to do these shows, I mean, what, 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 aside from Will Ospreay being on the show, um, and the possibility of them even mentioning New Japan Pro Wrestling on AEW television, uh, is that that much of a a bump for New Japan? And again, the U.S. shows, we can't use any AEW talent. Um, I don't know. It does seem like a, a bit of a... I, I don't say... I don't want to say it, it doesn't feel like a win for New Japan Pro Wrestling. But again, if you're in New Japan... Why, why would you allow it? I just don't see the benefit. Let's move on to discuss New Beginning USA. So we've got attendances for that. Tampa, 863. Uh, Durham, North Carolina, 637. Nashville, 560. Miami, 525. Atlanta, 855. So that's around 45%, 50%, 75%, 30%. I, I'm not sure exactly for Atlanta, but I think that's another sub 50% from what we understand. Uh, capacity for these full buildings so I think it's fair to say Damon that the people in charge of this uh, Obari that was the person named as the head of the US division in that big powerpoint they did last year him and his team they've got to sort this out because this is not good at all you can't run shows like this the, the US market is pretty close to saturation in terms of wrestling and fans are more discerning they're more demanding I, I think to some extent you could say that AEW filled that gap in the market for disillusioned WWE fans and we've also got things like NXT we've got ROH Impact NWA so there's a lot of competition there and most markets particularly East Coast and Midwest from what I understand are just saturated by live wrestling you, 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 and when New Japan announced this tour when they announced the venues we were a bit underwhelmed then we saw the cards, and they were a bit underwhelmed. And then we saw the attendances, and were underwhelmed. So it's just this kind of cascading feeling of disappointment throughout this tour. And I just said last year, when they were running the Fighting Spirit Unleashed and the, the showdown in San Jose shows, those were proof of concept for New Japan Pro Wrestling of America. They need to be more like that. Uh, well-booked shows where you've got most of the big stars, and it feels meaningful and less like this because this is just again the optics of this are, are not great i want to see what a full crew tour can do you, you've got to stop this split crew stuff because it doesn't work you, you end up with 500 fans in the building um tickets are too expensive and from what people who live in the area tell me there was practically zero local promotion like uh, 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 mark sport told me on twitter like not even on the marquee on the theater Wow. It's that level of like, lack of local promotion. And apparently there's AEW coming to town in two weeks. Raw's coming in a month. Impact's coming in early March, all at the same venue. Don't run head-to-head with the only WWE pay-per-view that people still actually watch. Uh, and Matt Francis, uh, 
contributes of Voices Wrestling brought this up, uh, this point about what they said the American tours would look like at their conference back in October. So these are quotes from them. US events will take place while the Japanese schedule is between tours. If there is high demand from fans, simultaneous tours may become a possibility. So, no. They've run this split tour. Uh, as much as is humanly possible, we plan for events to be live on New Japan Worlds. Where we can't arrange for live broadcasts, they will be on demand. Nope. Up to now, we have been working very well with our partners at Access TV and plan to continue doing so. Nope. Oh <laughs> Growing a footprint and increased consciousness in America. And once people are in those venues, then we can fire them up and have them ready to spread the word to larger and larger audiences. That's a no from me as well. Really? So okay. all that... See, that would be the only yes I would give, Right. That would be the only yes I could give because no, to, uh, to, uh, how uh, big? I mean, you got five hundred people. How, what right. good can five hundred people do? There's only so many people they can tell. Well, I, I I agree with that, but I mean, the idea that every one of those five hundred people, there was not one person that we've heard from where they walked out of that building and was like, "That fucking sucked." Uh, you know, what I mean, like the reports well, that we uh, get. Jonathan Snowden didn't have a good view from oh, the uh, well, yeah, That's true. <laughs> Yeah, you might need a new seat. That's, that's, I did see that. Uh, all right, that aside, uh, but they did look like comfortable seats where, if you could see. Uh, they had those nice leather uh, seats, and uh, I saw some people enjoying some beverages sitting there. It looked like, a, looked like you were watching uh, uh, a play or you know, a theater, uh, and maybe you were. Um, no, but I think everybody had a good time, right? And everybody enjoyed themselves. And of course you would. And that, that was never... That was never. Yeah, that, that's the uh, lowest bar to clear, though. <laughs> right, right. That was never in doubt. Like, no one like on this show or any show or anybody talking about it in, in any New Japan focused group would say, oh, these shows are going to stink, right? And, the, and these guys stink. It's not that. It's, it, the, some of the stuff wasn't as sexy as maybe we would, <laughs> would want. And it wasn't as, uh, you know, you're not really going to get the people that are on the fence for going to a show. Um, yeah, something needs to be done. I mean, we've, we've talked about it n- numerous times on this show. Those numbers are not numbers that you would want. You know, people are like, well, they're just kind of getting their feet wet and they're just testing this, this, and testing. We've been testing forever. <laughs> like, like but, but, we- Is that like the very Japanese business way of doing things? Like I- really super cautious? Okay, but we've been super cautious for how long, Joel? I mean, c- correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. We've been doing this well before, you know, New Japan of America was even a, a concept. You know, like when we were doing these tours with Ring of Honor, you know, it's not like what, nobody could take a look around and be like, okay, oh, so this is how this is done. And, and, and in a lot of ways, it was. Like... They used those War of the World shows as, you know, okay, A, we can do this, and B, this is how it's done. And, and I, just, I just find the, the lack of growth to be the most frustrating thing. It's, it's the fact that we're three years in, and these are the same numbers as last year and years before. Um, and, and, here, and somebody even brought up something that you know those shows that were co-promoted by Jersey All Pro the, the back in the early 2000s at Rawway, New York, Philadelphia. I mean this was you know you didn't have New Japan World back then. You didn't have you you were still you know getting shut stuff off the internet but it wasn't like it was like next day you were getting shit. Um you know Okada's not even a massive star yet. Um and they brought you know, they, 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 <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, they did better houses then for those shows than they did for the shows just a week ago. <laughs> so it's amazing to me. Um, yeah, something, something needs to be sh- shaken up, figured out. Um, a marketing plan needs to be in place. Um, I mean, listen, I could come up here with a thousand ideas and, and bang them out, but if they're not going to do them, then what the fuck's the point? Waste my time. My, my point is this. These, this is not a good look. And I, and I appreciate the fact that 500 people or 600 people had a great night. And of course you did. I hope, you know, if you didn't, then shame on you because you probably saw some really good wrestling 
with people that were, you know, hustling and working their ass off. But that's just <laughs> look, you can run here's here, here's what we understand. That these shows, these smaller shows, have a bigger and better possibility of being profitable as opposed to big show, big city, big venue, right? I still find it hard to believe that anyone in the company is doing any kind of cartwheels over, over those shows. And again, there are markets where they can be much better. I'm telling you flat out, Philadelphia, if they go to Philadelphia and when they announce a show in Philadelphia, and probably, I guess we're looking at that East Coast swing, probably like in like October, I would think. Um, when they announce those tickets go on sale, I promise you they're going to sell out. They're, you're going to see another 15, 20 second, you know, half hour, whatever it was, sell out. I, I promise you. Joel, they just ran, MLW just ran. 2300 arena and they, for what i understand they got a really nice crowd pro, uh, pro yes pro wrestling there is a there is a a a a huge amount of promotions and options for people but people in certain areas will still go you just got to go to those areas that means not nashville because I hate to break the bad news to you. Even with all this booming pro wrestling going on, right? And, and everybody running shows and everything. Was Nashville ever in a fucking conversation? You always hear it's like Chicago, Philly, uh, you know, even, you know, Southern California. Or, you know, you always heard of certain pockets in the, in the... I've never heard Nashville being this pro wrestling pocket, right? Where independent wrestling is thriving. Have you? I was going to say, Damon, I mean, this might be controversial, it might annoy people, but th they didn't sacrifice much, if anything, from the Japan tour. So it wasn't like they gave half of the great matches to the Japan shows and then half to the US shows, which then we can't see and there's only 500 people turning up. What, what I'm getting at is I don't care if this US expansion fails. I don't care if they stop coming to places like this because... I just want to watch good pro wrestling. I, for me, just selfish fans sitting in China, I don't give a shit if this US expansion goes well. So a, am I wrong for thinking that? Like, th these numbers, okay, they're bad, but what do I care? Because the New Japan, uh, new beginning in Sapporo and was great, and New Japan, uh, new beginning in Osaka looks amazing on paper as well. So why should, unless you live in these places, why should we care about this New Japan Pro Wrestling of America? Uh, great point. Uh, and here's what it comes down to. It comes down to people being upset that their promotion is shit in the bed when it comes to this. Because you want New Japan Pro Wrestling to be more high profile, bigger, and, and perceived to be a promotion that is an equivalent of WWE and AEW. That's really what it comes down to, right? <laughs> At this point, right? But they're not. They're not. They're right. not competition in any way, shape, or form for either of those companies you've mentioned. Right, right. And that's. But that's the disheartening part for. I, I, you know, I can't speak for everybody. I'm going to speak for me. That's the disheartening part because, again, three years ago, it absolutely could have been. You know what I mean? Three years ago, it absolutely could have been. Here's what. Here's the reality of it, though. Here's here's the true. And 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 th at the end of the day, this is really the honest to god truth. New Japan Pro Wrestling is a Japanese pro wrestling promotion that does shows all over the world. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're right. It doesn't matter that 500 people came to wherever it was, Nashville, or you know. Raleigh Durham or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because Osaka is going to do well, and we just, we came off some great new beginning shows, and the dome shows were great, and that's that's the biggest piece of their pie. Would it be great 
to have New Japan Pro Wrestling as the number two pro wrestling promotion in the United States? Yep. Would it be financial? Would it make you know sense to strive for that? It, at one point, it it would. But this is a promotion right now that has no television. And don't give me Vice. <laughs> I'm hearing people. They should go to they're talking about Vice. I, really? <laughs> okay. I guess nothing is better than something, or something is better than nothing. But okay. Uh, all right. Um, how about Comcast Sportsnet? Can we talk to them? Maybe is that could that be a possibility? But right now we have no television, right? So we have no way to even grab those casual fans. It's all word of mouth. It's all v- avenues like our show and and fans chatting it up. That's it. That's what they got, and they got a they and they got a U.S. promotion that quite honestly, has no idea of the market, has no idea of the fan base, has no idea that they can't be a touring company in 2020. It's just, you know, not happening. So as long as they are clear on what their expectations are, because it feels like their expectations are at one place and the reality of the situation is in another place, um... They're a Japanese pro wrestling company that does very well in the United States at certain times if they do it strategically and they do it right. And again, Madison Square Garden is going to be a big litmus test, right? Because, again, the talk of the pro wrestling world was, well, New Japan sold out that building, but we all know that uh, Kenny and and Bucks and, uh, you know, well, well, we won't announce that they won't be there. Um, and, you know, and everybody, you know. Well, we had a question with that. Uh, uh, Wizrad on Twitter, Devil's Advocate question. Have New Japan and ROH struggles with ticket sales in the US vindicated certain E-L-I-T-E wrestlers claims that they were undervalued? I don't think anyone, anywhere, is going to sit there and look at you with a straight face and say that Kenny and the Bucks at the time those tickets went on sale, weren't a factor in that building doing very well, I think they would be, if if they say no, they're lying to you. I I think everybody, even if you like Kenny, adult like Kenny, or the Bucks, or all of it, or their involvement in New Japan Pro Wrestling, you can't dispute the fact that when the tickets went on sale, which was like, you know, it felt like, what was it, October, and the show was in April, and... Kenny and the boys hadn't left yet, and AEW wasn't a thing yet. That, and again, it wasn't like they promoted Kenny's going to be there. It wasn't like they had him on posters and shit. Um, but the feeling was, and the, and the program at the time was Kenny and Tanahashi for the title at the Tokyo Dome. And if you're just, uh, uh, you know, if you're not in on the contracts or the business end or that kind of stuff, yeah, you went into this thinking, okay. Kenny and the, the elite are going to be there. Um, also, I mean, listen, you can't discount the fact that it was WrestleMania weekend, right? Um, but I will say this as well. They had a very sexy show, too. They brought, you know, they brought their A game to yeah, that half Madison Square show. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> right, right. New Japan did their part. They, they did their part. Um, and again, they, they, they can... They, uh, I mean, you know, we're talking about 500 seaters and 800 seater, you know, and it's it's not like they can't have these magical moments if they do it well. Look at the copper box. I mean, that's that that is a to me that is more of a I mean, obviously it's a positive, but more of a look at what what New Japan Pro Wrestling can do if given the opportunity. Um, in a market that they know that they can have success in, like that, like the copper box is was super well done, super intelligent. Um, took advantage of a fan base that is that is ravenous for pro wrestling, um, and did very well. That I, I mean, I don't think anybody. I mean, aside from the fight TV fiasco, that's not of anybody's fault, but you know, technology. That New Japan Pro Wrestling show in London was great. Okay, I, and I know that there was the shuffling around internally, and 
Um, so that might be a big factor in that why that's not happening. But wouldn't, wouldn't that have made sense? Wouldn't, wouldn't every opportunity available to them to get back in that building or a similar building, wouldn't that, why, why are we not doing that? Now again, something might be in the works that hasn't been announced yet. And I know, look, I know everybody can't wait to fucking lay the boots to us for Madison Square Garden, but at the end of the day, and, and probably real soon, uh, I think I think we'll be uh, putting on our trainers and and uh, doing our victory lap. So hang on there. Um, we we were at a point where do we care about U.S. expansion anymore? Is that a thing for us as as fans? Should we sit here and give a shit about this supposed U.S. expansion um, and not get stressed out over it? Is, is that it? Because again, I feel like it's just fans getting riled up because their promotion isn't doing everything they can to be a top promotion in the United States, and that's really where I feel a lot of this is coming from. The other big story to come out was Marty Skull challenging Jay White to a match at Supercard of Honor, which is a card that is looking quite interesting now. Uh, Taylor made on Discord says my pants are getting more and more down for Supercard of Honor. As easy as it's been to shit on ROH lately, can you see them turning a corner under Marty Skull? So, uh, David, first of all, what do you think of the announcement of Marty versus Jay? And to answer Taylor made's question, can you see them turning a corner now? Uh, you know, here's the thing. Um, I said a couple of weeks ago, I said the best partner that New Japan Pro Wrestling could have is Ring of Honor. I, 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 I did say that. Um, and, you know, week by week, you're hearing little things, little positive snippets uh, about Ring of Honor. And uh, again, you see Marty showing up in, at, at one of these shows. Uh, what was it? Atlanta or whatever. Which one? North Carolina one. Um, and that's a positive. That's a good thing. You're like, like if nobody expected it. Right. Um, and, you know, with the value of the Internet, uh, word spread very quickly. And then the announcement there. Um, also, what is it? Bandito versus Shingo is on, on a WrestleCon show, or I mean, these are sexy matches, right? We, I think we're I think we're happy with that. Ring of Honor I, uh, is is the one place where and one one um, promotion where if you're going to have that connection in the United States. I think it might be the best fit. Now, again, there's still plenty of work to be done, um, but I think repairing that relationship might do both promotions pretty well. And the other big story to come out of this tour was Gorillas of Destiny yeah. winning the tag titles yet again. David Finley, poor David Finley, eating a pin in his hometown. I imagine the direction will be something like Gorillas of Destiny versus Villain Enterprises, that supercar of honor to prop up that Jay White versus Marty Skrull thing but yeah that one can't help but feel disappointed about that and we've got a few questions about that Japanese Retro Game Center says am I the only one who enjoys G.O.D. and think the tag division is okay sure it could be better but it's miles better than any Hunter Club match what needs to be improved and are those improvements feasible at least they can have a title match anywhere they want Hit the Books pod says, on a scale of 1 to 100, how stoked are you for another G.O.D. tag title reign? And uh, Daniel says, it was interesting that the announcers gave away the tag results right before saying the matches would go up on New Japan World soon. I guess the heavyweight tag title just really matters that little. What, they gave the results uh, as, as, a, as a spoiler? Um, I didn't hear yeah, they, they said on the show last night that the titles had changed hands. Hmm. Okay. Um, oh, and without without showing the match, I got you, got you, got you. Um, well, here's the thing: I don't have a, I don't necessarily have a problem with that in the sense of, you know, the commentary team, you know, the, the results of the results. I mean, people at the show tweeted it out, and you know, <laughs> you know, that's. I mean, I found out about that first. Then, you know, people sending me text messages uh, as opposed to Kevin or Chris or Gino. Uh, giving out spoilers. Um, I, I look, it, it leaves me scratching my head. I, f- I kind of feel like they did it just to say, "All right, fuck you guys." If uh, you think these shows are so unimportant, important here, tag title change, right? Um, 
I hope that's not the case. I hope they're not doing it for us. That's the worst thing they could do. Um, what is it with this company, man? When they when they 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 do a tag title change at a, at a dome show that people are are somewhat excited for. I think I think people were very excited for the ideas of these different new fresh mashups. We were talking about it on a, on a show about all the possible combinations and ideas of what you know. We had this fucking tag situation booked out till the, till the dome. It felt like all the possibilities, and they just went back and and decided to give it to <laughs> God -O -D again. Uh, um, again, first title defense. They love those first title defenses for those tag belts on tag teams that people kind of get excited for. I, 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 Joe, I don't have an answer. I, I, I wish I did. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think they just they, they don't know what else to do with Gorilla's Destiny. They feel that unless they are challenging for titles or holding the titles, that, that they've got to use them or lose them. I, I mean, they're that. They're, okay, I was about to say they're that valuable a piece that they they. <laughs> you know what I mean? Would losing them be all that bad? Um, I just you. I don't know. I, they I, they I, are over with the Western fans. Yeah. They seem to get good reactions at live events. Yeah. So yeah. maybe it's a bit of fear. Maybe they think, oh, well, we'd better keep the belts on these guys, keep them happy, otherwise they're going to be going off to other companies. Okay. I mean, we're not jobbing them out. We're not, they're not, they're not going to fucking turn into the goddamn Mulkies. But uh, do they have to be in the tag title mix all the time? We can't have them, him, them, and Fale challenge for the six-man. We can't have them be in, a, in an undercard feud to be the number one contender. We, we can't have them, I don't know, just fucking, I don't, something else. We have to keep the tag titles on them. And again, I wouldn't even be too upset if this were in August or September or World Tag League or something along those lines. Joel, they had one tag title defense in front of 600 people. I don't know. I kind of thought I kind of I was kind of hoping for a little bit more out of out of the possibilities of Juice and Finley, right? Again, unless somebody's hurt, unless somebody they had to get the belts off them, or whatever the case may be. I cannot think of any real logical reason aside from we're going to do this just to, to just to make keep people on their toes to give them something for these shows because of all the complaints or B they, they, they like they I, like I find it hard to believe that either you know Gorilla Gorilla is a destiny is going up and and saying listen if we don't get the fucking belts back we're leaving you know what I mean like I don't, they don't, I, don't I honestly don't think they give a fuck you know if they have the belts or not. They seem pretty loyal to New Japan as well. Tell yeah. me specifically. I've never seen anything from him that indicates he would want to work elsewhere. So, right. yeah, maybe that's a non-starter, that one. Right. I mean, of anybody, he's, he seems like a very loyal New Japan guy. Um, you know, he's, he's not afraid to, to tweet out stuff, you know, along the lines of, you know, I've been here, you know, at the, in the dojo, young, you know, all the way through. So, you know, I just don't understand it, man. And, and here's the thing, they did it with Shibata and, and Kota. Everybody was excited for that one. Why did they do this, Joe? Why? It's fucking frustrating. I, I, I can't bring myself to get upset or emotional about it. It's just like, oh, okay, well, that's happening. And hand wave, let's move on. Okay, but that's the problem. Because when you just get apathy... So, so w for two segments, we just went, uh, all right, I'm fucking hand waving... USA expansion. It, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is, and, and it is what it is, right? Now, we're, oh, okay, tag title, here we go again. We're, fuck it, we're just hand-waving it, blah, blah, blah. All right, uh, here's my biggest fear, and I will say this to the day I fucking die. When you get a fan base that it becomes apathetic, like, New Japan, you want to hear, this sucks, uh, don't do this, why are you do like, like, that feedback is better than, eh, it's just them doing them, eh, Hand wave, shoulder shrug. 
Like when you get that and you get a lot of that, that then you become a problem. Then fans tune out. Then fans lose interest. Then fans stop buying tickets. When you keep doing that in multiple scenarios of apathy, eh, it's just New Japan being New Japan. Eh, you want idiots like us screaming into a microphone to fix your fucking tag team situation. You want that because when you don't get that and when Damon starts fucking toning it down and Joel is like, eh, I don't give a shit. Guess what? That trickles down to thousands of people. <laughs> right? It kind of does. Uh, so don't let, you, know, you don't want that. We you don't want hand waving and, and shoulder shrugging, but that's what you got at the tag belts, and it doesn't have to be that way. That's the problem. I think that's the biggest thing. It doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, and I wish it weren't. Um, I, I I would love to be able to summon some passion for this, but this is just how I feel at the moment, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Uh, the other thing that was interesting is Jeff Cobb beating Lance Archer in their singles match. And Lance tweeting a picture of a crossroads, which I don't know how much, if anything, we can read into Cobb beating Archer. You know, it's not as if Archer had become some unbeatable commodity, but based on what we discussed last week, it's clear that things are uncertain in his future. Yeah, and again, it might be just a guy that's positioning himself for a bigger deal. You know, you you know, playing off those rumors of conversations and such um i know like, like chase owens did <laughs> <laughs> a that, date <laughs> that was one of the greatest moments in in all of pro wrestling internet history uh he was that was pretty funny actually good job by chase um it, it even had us like you know kind of funny uh I, I, scale of one to ten joel do you think lance archer is going to a E W. I'll give it a five. Sitting firmly on the fence there. Firmly on the fence. I say. I think he is going. I think he is. Um, I don't have any confirmation. I've never spoken to the man. I've spoken to the man, but I've never. Obviously, not about this. Um. Because uh, because I, I gotta be honest with you, I'm in the camp of why not, right? Again, the idea of going you shows you're instantly on national television um you would think that he would have a nice little push um you instantly become a, a star you have guaranteed money and the travel is considerably lighter right and you i'm sure he could work into the deal of working you know independent dates and i'm sure again not sure but i, I would assume that he would still be able to do bigger japan stuff yeah as long as it doesn't conflict with uh with uh aew dates i can't see why if if all those things check the box i i can't see why he wouldn't he'd be silly not to at again he's not a spring chicken he's not he's not 19 20 years old he's coming off a major back surgery if he's got an opportunity to make money at a at a maybe an easier schedule and be Let's be honest with you. More of a star on on TV instantly. Why wouldn't you do it? So, uh, yeah, I, I'm leaning. I'm more of along the lines of an eight. Something Nicole mentioned to me earlier on today that was interesting was at some point on the afternoon of the Miami show, they decided to turn that semi-main. So that was Finjuice against Chase and Nudro. They changed that into a disqualification and then the main event, which was going to be Rocky and Tanahashi versus Gorillas of Destiny, into an eight-man tag where they, they basically added the people from match six to the main event as well. And in this match, Tanahashi pinned Yujiro. Uh, Nicole pointed out, even if with Ibushi out, you still could have had Tanahashi pin a Gorillas of Destiny member to at least set up a potential Golden Aces versus G.O.D. for, say, the Tiger Nakanishi retirement show. If this was always a mini program to give Tana and Ibushi something to get them through to New Japan Cup, which presumably neither is winning. But I just figure they wouldn't want Gorillas of Destiny losing to a makeshift team of Rocky and Tanahashi. So they wanted Tanahashi to get this pinfall, but they didn't want Gorillas of Destiny taking a clean pin, which I guess when Ibushi was swapped for Rocky, the possibility of G.O.D. losing was taken off the table. And, and along those lines, it kind of feels like the idea of Tana and Abushi tag team is, uh, 
might be dead as well, don't you think? Well, looking at the new beginning in Osaka, we have a team of Tanahashi, Ibushi and Finjuice. So they are still together, but I don't know what the long-term future of that is. Right. Because, you know, at Dash, when all the finger-pointing was occurring, that just seemed like it, it... I don't know. I just feel it felt like that was more of the story of young, new champions, established vets, and if you can get past the established vets, we're, you know, that helps uh, solidify your tag team title run. Right, that's the feeling I got. Um, right, so Ibushi getting hurt meant that the Golden Aces versus Finjuice program was taken off the table. So they needed something for Finjuice to do. So maybe it was like a last minute decision to put the belts on God so they can sort of trade wins with Finjuice mm-hmm. until the Golden Aces thing is back on. If it's all, I, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of my mindset with that. Um, it could be complete fucking utter nonsense but yeah i mean that's like right now as i sit here on you know the third of february at seven o'clock in the fucking morning uh yes i uh that that's kind of where i'm at with this that this was this might be just a um a pausing right to to kind of wait to get that program rocking and rolling or (laughs) <laughs> or it's G.O.D. that's going to just keep the belts and they're going to uh, you know, get out the eraser on, in the notebook and, and scratch the idea of Coda and, and uh, Tana as this tag team. Ugh. I don't like that thought. Anyway, let's move yeah. on uh, finally an hour in to New Beginning in Sapporo, which started on Saturday, February 1st in Hokkaido the attendance was 4,569 so a little bit down from last year which was 4,868 which had a main event of Jay White and Bad Luck Fale against Kazuchika Okada and Hiroshi Tanahashi so there was a lot of interest in that show in seeing Tanahashi and Okada team up for the first time but uh, it's still a healthy number and I did enjoy Gino Gambino at the start making a, a crack a cracking a joke about the Steve Carino virus that did make me laugh much needed levity in the, uh, the difficult circumstances we're experiencing at the moment in China uh, so let's get into the matches then so we open up with El Fantasmo Taiji Ishimori beating Yu Uemura and Tiger Mask in 8 minutes 13 seconds Ishimori making Uemura submit to the yes lock and I thought it was a pretty good opener uh, more and more El Fantasmo is reminding me of the cleaner version of Kenny Omega with the goofy heel shtick and it was was just a nice touch of continuity that he laid in a cheap shot to Gabriel Kidd post-match to set up their match the following day Uh, that was a good touch and I thought there was a really fantastic closing stretch here with Uemura and Ishimori I just feel that Yu Uemura he's just light years ahead of so many other wrestlers even as a young lion and do you what do you think of well the match what do you think of Uemura do you think he's more talented than Shota Umino I don't know if he's more talented, but he's in that same category of upper echelon young lion. It's kind of hard for me to, again, I always say, like, I, oh, connection, right? Can, can he make a connection? And I think because I feel like as a young lion, they, they are all really equal when it comes to in-ring performance. Um, and, and dare I say, for, for where they are as pro wrestlers, they're all on like a great trajectory, right? They're all going to be great um, if they can stick out, you know, the harsh life of being a young lion. Uh, it's not for everybody, as as we all know. Um, so it, I'm looking for connection. I'm I'm looking for uh, you know, personality, having that it, right? Whatever that it might be. Um, and I absolutely think he's yeah, he's he's one of the top. Young Lions in that as well. Um, I, I, they, they were making specific n- n- uh, comments about his fire, right? And and <laughs> you know he he's laying in elbow shots and he almost catapults himself outside the fucking ring, which was pretty great. Um, I I also like the idea of, and it's not a hardcore where it's I'm taking this guy under my wing and he's a, um, I'm his manager. You know, it's not as, you know, in your face with it. But I like the idea of these guys having subtle mentors, 
um, Tiger Mask here. Um, you know, there, there's guys who, you know, were Yuji Nagata is their guy. You know, I like that idea of each almost having their own little, you know, captain or their own little, uh, again, mentor. Um, and I like the fact that, you know, again, subtly, you know, it's Tiger Mask for Uemo. Um, I like the match a lot. I, I know what I like too, and I like the in the commentary where they kept mentioning where okay, ELP and Ishimori they aren't in the mix right now. You know they aren't in the tag title mix, and they rattled off different teams that are you know that are in the mix, and and that fact that they need to get a win and get back in gear and get, like it seems like there's more depth and more importance in the junior tag division, you know, because there is that hierarchy of, of teams fighting to be the number one contender. Um, I don't know. It just seems a little bit more concrete to me. And I like the fact that they put that over constantly. Um, I don't think there was any doubt of who was getting the win or who was getting the pinfall. But um, I like the fact that there, there was this idea of one, a young line that's going to get the majority of the work, Right to to and they even were mentioning just to make him feel uncomfortable right in those situations and two that there is a pecking order for the IWGP Junior Tag Team Championships um, and that was pounded home. I, I thought that was a fantastic job all the way around. Yes, I think something that the New Japan Booking Committee does really well is setting up the next guy or the next team for a particular division where you don't just have like a random guy or a random team coming out and challenging and you're thinking well, why is this guy getting the next shot it's always well, they do do just that. Subtly, <laughs> so, well sometimes but yeah. e- even then when they if, if that does happen a lot of the time it will be a person who has strung together right. uh, a little series of wins maybe some pinfalls in multi-man matches or they've won a big singles match coming into their challenge so I think that's something they do well uh, in agreement with you Damon uh, second match the Manabu Nakanishi retirement tour continues so we had Toe Hanare, Tomaki Homba, Togi Makabe defeating Yota Suji, Manabu Nakanishi, Hiroyoshi Tenzan. Toe Hanare getting another win by yep. pinning Yota Suji after 9 minutes 41 with the Toe bottom. Uh, Nakanishi really looks like he's hurting. Uh, so looking forward to, well, I'm trying to enjoy the rest of his matches as much as I can. And I thought the triple submission spot was pretty cool in this match. So I enjoyed that and good to see Hanare get another win. So. I don't know if they are heating him up with something specific in mind, making him look credible. Maybe he's going to be entering the New Japan Cup again soon. Who knows? I think I would love to see Hanari in, in New Japan Cup. I really would. I mean, again, I don't know how far he would go, but they always do like to have those little surprises. That might be a nice one. Um, it's, he was it, in last year. I think he lost to, was it Lance yeah. Archer in the first round? Um, you got to go back because that might have been completely unforgettable for me. <laughs> I don't remember. Was he in the New Japan Cup last year? Yeah, he definitely was. Let me really? New Japan Cup. Come on, Cup look that up. Because they, they expanded it, didn't they? They did. They did. two people. And you were on that episode of Wrestling on Makaze when you gave your bracket buster hot That's take right. about Chase Owens beating Juice Robinson, didn't you? I did. Uh, here we are. Uh, yep. Toe Hanari, Lance Archer. So he lost in 11 minutes go. to right. Lance Archer in the All first right. round. Well, maybe a bigger win. <laughs> maybe a big one. So I would remember. Um, I, it's funny because he, they, they were making a lot of mention about um, him being chiseled and cut. And, you know, and it's funny. When we did lunch, he carries around, like, he's so dedicated. He has a, um, a guy who puts him on a, a specific diet um, for mass and to be cut and all that. And he weighs out his food. Like he has, he brought a portable scale. He is damn. Fuck, man. Can you imagine that? I just, you know, when I see guys like with amazing physiques like Ibushi and Shion, you feel jealous, obviously, envious that they're in such good shape and they look amazing. But their existence must be absolutely miserable having to weigh out all their food and eat. Yeah. You know, but you show his Instagram just like boiled eggs and tins of tuna and blah. I just right. I so much admiration for for the dedication it must take to stick to that because there's nothing I love more than just eat whatever the fuck I like and to right. have that taken away from me would just I 
I'm not going to say I'd rather be dead, but I'd be really unhappy. Right. I mean, but here's the end result, though. You, if you, if you live the, by that motto too long, Joel, you wind up looking like me, right? So uh, I would say moderation, right? But yeah, I mean, it, it, like he he had a scale and he was he had to weigh his food and and the protein macros and all that stuff um and he had a specific diet uh, that he was following i mean religiously like to the letter um with with all of it so and, and again you got to consider the fact that he he doesn't live in japan he flies back and forth um that's 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 and to look the way that he does and and to see the improvements even with what he had um and again living that lifestyle and tr the travel and everything like that takes so much fucking dedication like all those people now when i say all those people i mean pro wrestlers who take their craft seriously that's i mean you gotta that they just they just don't wake up out of bed and fucking have that that's 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 dedication right there's a big thing between going in the ring and having great matches. But I think, to me, a lot of that, a lot of the hard work about being a pro wrestler is the stuff outside the ring. The diet, the, the training, the, make, the travel, making time to do all that, you know, and get to the arena and, you know, work a safe, you know. I feel like the, the in-ring stuff is, is the last part of the equation. Um, and that was really eye-opening. Like, again, I'm there to, to fucking gorge myself on meats and food and drink, you know what I mean, and have laughs and, and talk with really interesting, fun people. And you got him, you know, doing the same, having a great time, but with, with, with the, in the back of his mind, I got to weigh this fucking food. That's amazing. So, so there you go. There's a little, there's a little insight on Hanare. Match three was Ryusuke Takuchi, Sho, Yo, and Will Ospreay defeating Doki, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, El Desperado, and Zack Sabre Jr. Takuchi getting the pin over Doki in 11 minutes 45 with the Dodon. Uh, very fun, high-paced match. And I thought it was strange to have Taguchi win uh, on this night. And he also picked up the win the following night as well. Given that this is a person that does not have a sing particular singles program or, or tag program or anything lined up. So... Again, I wonder if he is being heated up for something, maybe at the anniversary show. Yeah, well, it's a good possibility. I mean, it's also a safe thing to do. You know, he's getting a pinfall over Doki, right? So it's two guys, and I don't want to say, you know put anybody in any particular pecking order, but two guys don't really have a program, per se, um, to kind of protect guys that you don't necessarily want to have to do anything regarding taking a pinfall or gaining a pinfall they go off they have their programs they they got to settle the, their shit later on in a week and you know next night and what have you um so just to have these two guys kind of take care of to, to tie the, the 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 bow up on the match um have them two together um would be the easiest way to get out of dodge without hurting or protecting anyone um and you knew it was going to be kind of like this you know those guys pairing off with their partners and you know brawling and taking care of shit outside the ring just to just to make room for that so maybe maybe they're heating up to gooch i mean it, it is significant that it's you know and, and let's go back to uh he got the pinfall on liger yeah you think those things are deliberate i mean i don't know how this is gonna what the end game is but watch this space if Taguchi pops up with something to do in the not too distant future I don't know maybe he's going to enter the New Japan Cup again who knows um, fourth match then special tag match we had Robbie Eagles and Ryu Lee defeating Bushi and Hiromu Takahashi Robbie Eagles getting the submission win over Bushi yeah. in 11 minutes 47 with the Ron Miller special so Robbie Eagles very strongly being set up as the next junior challenger and I thought it was interesting here we had Ryu Lee as positioned as the Rudo in this match you know, he's spitting at Hiromu he's doing the I pose he's doing the combination cabron so I thought that was pretty interesting and yeah really good high paced hard working fun tag match here yeah this was great I mean on paper the fucking talent that's, that was in that ring was pretty incredible uh, again New Japan doing a great job of setting up people just like we've been talking about all show setting up people for the next guy to be in line 
Robbie Eagles getting a pin. Um, look, uh, to me, there is no more exciting time to sit in front of a couch in front of your TV, sitting on your couch in front of a TV, and watch pro wrestling when it comes to Hiromo and uh, Ryu Lee Dragon Lee. Like, those two guys, the minute they get in the ring, it is just like, it's, it feels like as if it were Ishii and Shingo, right? Like, where you're like, okay, I'm at the, or, you know, Tanahashi Okada, anytime those two get in the ring, you're just like, okay, here we go. And when they get in the ring, I mean, they start off and they're just slapping the fuck out of each other. Um, you know, just to kind of set the tone, right? And then every time, you know, you know, Lee doing his fucking tributes to Shibata, Hiromo being Hiromo, it hasn't missed a beat. Every time he gets whipped into those guardrails, though, I'm not going to lie, I do cringe a little bit. But um, I just find those two and, and those two together to be just one of those magical combinations of uh, in pro wrestling that every time they get together I'm just fucking ex- like I, I, I amp up and because I, I know it's going to be great and, and at a pace that's like 200,000 miles an hour I know that they brought up like didn't they bring up something in English commentary about uh, they, they did like a 50 yard dash like a sprint contest or something like that and Kevin Kelly was like oh I'd like to see that how great would that be to have like the, these physical fitness contests like who can bench press the most juniors heavyweights and fucking videotape that have that be like a competition or like sprints you know a 50 yard dash competition or i don't know some other fucking track and field event i don't know i would be fucking so down for that the only thing you would worry about are injuries like somebody pulling a fucking hammy but the idea of having like Chaos versus Bullet Club in like a track and field event. I would fucking watch that right now if I could see. It's that. interesting you say that because uh, our mutual friend, friend of the show, Manabu, he sent me a link to a YouTube video of uh, Satoru Sayama, the original Tiger Mask, being put through his paces in such exercises. You know, doing the sprinting contests and stuff. And there was a little clip in this video of him and Inoki working out together, lifting. This. It was really weird. It was like a giant key ring with all these weights jangling around on them so yeah i'd love to see more sort of stuff like that yeah i mean that would be i I would be so into it and again you don't even have to like have the fat like if you're trying to kayfabe everything you know try not to have the the factions together but you just time it so you know bushi's time was you know eight seconds and and you know and then they got to beat that you know their junior guys got to beat that so i don't know how they do it but do something like that come on and, and also for these u.s shows if fucking nakanishi isn't in the nathan's hot dog eating contest you're losing it you're, you're losing it right that was not my idea by the way it was nicole's idea i gotta give her full credit for that but again what let's let's have let's have nakanishi monster morning guy getting that nathan's hot dog eating contest right to promote this uh right. i'm down <laughs> Right? How fucking great would that be? How great would that be? What are we what are we what are we doing here? I mean, why aren't we running this? <laughs> we should be running this. Fucking A. I mean, these are free. These are free ideas. Not an issue in the I'm fucking. Sure people listen. If, if you see it popping up on New Japan World next month, then you know people are listening. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, at least at least get them. Listen, at the very least, do it your own. Just fucking take them to Nathan's, buy them fifty dollars worth of hot dogs, and be like, okay, videotape it, go, eat them, right? That's. I mean, at the very least, do that. Our fifth match was a special tag <laughs> match with Jay White and Kenta defeating Sanada and Tetsuya Naito. Jay White. Pinning Sonata with the schoolboy after a whopping 18 minutes and 24 oh, seconds. I know. I like this, even though it was really long. I just enjoyed the the dynamics. Kenta saying, shut your fucking mouth to people ringside. Uh, Naito, when he rolled in... Uh, uh, oh, no, he was, someone was holding the the uh, ring ropes open for him. The top rope and the middle rope. And then he just climbed in between the middle rope and the bottom rope just to be right. a dickhead. It, it was just top quality shithousery. And then when Naito rolled in and then immediately rolled out of the ring, like he just did a perfect right angle of the, the mat. 
uh, and Kenta doing a mocking Sanada, Sanada chance to the crowd. I would just love to see an extended uh, Jay White and Kenta tag team because it's just a pair of absolute wankers and I love it. So uh, Jay White evens up the uh, the score here after their match at Dash. So it's 1-1 now after Sanada got the win in the match at New Year Dash. And yeah, good good match here, I thought, even if it was a bit long. What do you think? I thought it was really long. Yeah, I thought it was... There, there. Unfortunately, this one got the old uh, time to check the phone gimmick at certain spots. Um, if, if it, it was an okay match, it was a good match. But yeah, dude, I, do we need to go twenty minutes? <laughs> it just felt like it was a lot of. I want to say stalling. I wouldn't go that far, but it just kind of felt like we could have shaved off a good a good solid five minutes and been more than fine getting the point over that we needed to get over. Um, you say that about quite a lot of matches in New Japan for wrestling, but you're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. This one, this one felt extra special to me to, to do that. Um, and again, we're being heels and we're being, you know, bad guys and we're doing all, but yeah, I mean, this one had no, no rhyme or reason to go 18 fucking minutes. Steel O'Neill asks, will Sonata's moveset, Skyland's moonsault and Paradise Lock hold him back from being a main event boy? To me, they all feel like they lack impact and are a bit boring. I think whatever Sonata is doing seems to be working wonders with the Japanese fans because he's yeah. always rating highly in these polls. I think he feels like a main event star in Japan. So whilst he might not be ticking all the boxes that we like from our main event wrestlers, whatever he's doing is resonating with Japanese fans. I would agree 100% with that. And I think, I think a lot had to, and I, and I don't want to say this to be like, well, we went to Japan and I, mean, but like, until you kind of see that in action and, and live, um, it does kind of open your eyes a bit. And, and trust me, don't, don't get me wrong. It's not like we, we still don't say it uh, to a large degree that it just, for whatever reason, it's just, I don't feel like he's one of my top guys. Um, and, you know, come, you know, May and June when that feeling of January wears off, you kind of forget that. But, yeah, I mean, Joel's absolutely right. It's just it just maybe it's just a thing where, you know, he connects with the right audience. And even if you're a Western fan, um, maybe that's what you gravitate toward toward your pro wrestling for. I, I just don't know if he's my kind of guy and it might just come down simple as that. Sick match, we had a special tag match with Minoru Suzuki and Taichi defeating John Moxley and Kazuchika Okada. Suzuki pinning Moxley in 17 minutes 48 after a gotch style pile driver. So Mox had his eye patch with a bit of continuity for what was going on in All Elite Wrestling, which was not... The, AEW weren't referenced on commentary, but they did mention the attack from Jericho. And it was just funny the way that the, the eye patch popped off during the strike exchange and revealing a perfectly healthy looking eye underneath. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed the Mox and Okada team that they were on the same page they were using some strategy like uh, Okada was waiting for Moxie so they could do the double team attack at the start of the match and Mox just outing himself as a massive Japanese wrestling nerd you know, UWF you know he's busting out his STF his cross heel holds uh, having a fun little guardrail duel with Suzuki this might just be a me thing Damon but I was slightly concerned that Mox and Suzuki have given away a bit too much in these tag matches both this and the following night that I, in these matches, I want like a little taste, a little teaser from what to expect in the singles match. But it felt like this was a Moxie versus Suzuki match with a bit of Okada and Taichi thrown in there. Is that just me? No. Um, I mean, and again, they're, they're going to do what they do best, right? So I, I don't think that... Like, I, look, I don't think you're going to get a, a uh, shoot-style match come Osaka... In their singles match, I think this is exactly what you're going to get. Um, this this exchange and you know, I'll hit you, you hit me, and let's see who's tougher. I'm sure we'll see a ton of that. Um, so, and I don't, and I don't expect anything less. Be honest, I don't, I don't expect anything else. So I don't know if they're like holding back. S- things for this match i would not expect it 
So yeah, I mean, I could see where you 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 would think that this is. I kind of want to want to you, you kind of want a little extra, and and maybe hold back on this match to kind of show something special for their singles match. And that's not to say that they won't have anything special, like spots or anything like that. But this is going to be a brawl, and this is going to be a match where it's. I'm going to stand in front of you and throw a shot, and you're going to throw a shot at me, and we're going to see who's tougher. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, what what they would have held back on in this match, though. I don't. I mean, maybe that. Maybe the outside the brawling stuff they could have held off on, maybe. Um, but yeah, it did feel like there were two matches going on at the same time, didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> Sorry, I was just unmuting myself. I was looking up other stuff. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to mention the fact that Dangerous Tech has had an attack after the bell. And it just made me think, I could be completely off base on this, but there just seemed to be a little hint that we might be getting a ZSJ Okada rerun somewhere. I don't know, maybe they'll see each other in the New Japan Cup early in the rounds. But yeah, just the fact that they cross paths, I wondered, is that accidental? And as is often the case in New Japan, it usually isn't. So maybe something to keep an eye on there. Uh, that um, beatdown took forever, though. That th- that beatdown felt like it went on for 20 minutes, didn't it? Mm. I mean, yes, yeah, so I guess th- th- this is something that's going to connect to my thoughts on the main event the following night, but they definitely wanted to make Okada not 100% going into that match. Yeah, they they, they, they drove home that. <laughs> that's for sure. In fact, again... That beatdown went for, what, 10 minutes, it felt like, uh, all when it was all said and done. So, yeah, they really drove home the fact that they wanted Okada to be as uh, less than 100% as possible. So that brings us to the semi-main event, the seventh match, special singles match between Tomohiro Ishii and Evil. I thought this was a good match, very good match, but maybe... I'm on an island here. They're, they're, they're starting to feel a bit tropey. Like if I shut my eyes and imagine what is Ishii versus Evil going to look like, what kind of spots are we going to see? There's going to be lots of chops and lots of lariats, and then you you charge that way, I'm going to charge this way, we're going to bump into each other and doing the shoulder blocks and, and all that stuff. And that was exactly what we got. So, you know, it was what it said on the tin. I thought the opening was entertaining. I thought the closing stretch was entertaining. The middle, I thought, kind of lost its way a bit. I don't know. This just kind of fell below my high expectations of it. They built up a whole thing in the build-up that it was going to be worked around the Scorpion Deathlock because of Evil's injury, but that just didn't come into play at all here. So I was hoping that they might have a more interesting twist on the usual Hoss battle but they just they, they played it extremely straight and a lot of people seem to enjoy it so uh, to- Ishii picked up the win so maybe setting himself up as a future challenger for that never title and Evil is now 0-9 in singles matches versus Tomohiro Ishii so what did you think of the match? See I like that I, I like that idea uh, one I like the idea of these guys doing their beefy battle I, I, because it feels like in New Japan that those type of matches, I can't say that they're going away. I don't, by no stretch of the imagination. But you know, you look up and down cards, and it seems like these type of hoss battles are. I don't, again, I don't, I don't. I don't know if taking a back seat is the word I'm looking for. But look, I got. Well, here's what we got. We got an Ishii singles match, which means, yes, we're going to see the chops. We're going to see the uh, strikes. We're going to see the headbutt spots, right? I'm in. I'm all for it. Like, yes, is it a similar pattern that you would see in, you know, beef, beefy boy fights, right? And again, I don't think you're going to get anything different from putting evil in there. I, I was just, I again, I appreciated the fact that it was it was what was advertised because that's exactly what I was looking for and it's exactly what I wanted. I ordered a steak. I got a fucking steak. Did I get the best steak I ever got? No, but I got a really fucking good piece of meat, right? Um, I love the closing stretch. Was the middle a little bit? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm splitting hairs because I, I, I got what I wanted. I knew what I wanted and I liked what I got. 
Um, I mean, are you, I mean, I, I know we don't like to throw around the flakes, but let's do some flakes. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a four. I'm a solid four. Are you in the fours? Maybe oh. three and three quarters, four. There, there okay. or thereabouts. Like, like close enough to not really make much, much of a difference. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I liked the match. I mean, I, I, the, the match ended and I was like, all right, that was a good fucking big boy battle. Um, again, not the, the, I wouldn't put this in the upper echelon of, of Ishii matches. I don't think this will sniff a match of the year ballot, but I thought for what was advertised, as you say, on the tin, I think we, it, it, it delivered, um, what what would you have wanted more of? Like what what do you just variety or or what 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 would you have wanted? I wanted more from Evil. I wanted a performance where, regardless of the result, I could point to that and say, "Look, Evil is a guy who, when he gets these big spots, each and each time he delivers and he deserves a push. He should be banging down the door to be included in the upper echelons of the heavyweight singles division." Mm-hmm. So I wanted a, a you know a bit more story in the match. Again, I wanted to see that Scorpion Deathlock because that was something that was teased in the build-up and it just never materialised in the match. So I wanted the beefy boy stuff, but I wanted a bit more depth to it as well. So I wanted my steak, but I also wanted my, my side dishes as well. And I wanted my uh, duck fat twice-cooked chips and my... I don't know what other stuff you eat with a, <laughs> with a steak. My, my grilled uh, field mushrooms with a, a garlic butter. Now you're so, talking. Yeah, just a bit of extra. Bit of extra. So I, again, I'm saying it's a very good match. Like if I do land at three and three quarters, that's still a really, really good match that I enjoyed a lot. But was it something that I thought was making a case for either guy to get a sustained uh, singles push in the heavyweight division? Not really. No, it okay. just was more of what we expected from both guys. Is that disappointing knowing that Evil had that opportunity? And again, we're going to, yes. we're going to, yeah, against a singles match again, once again, against Ishii who can have a good match, uh, you know, a lot, <laughs> right? He's had, he's had more. He, Ishii, good, he has an Ishii uh, match, doesn't he? Every, you yeah. know exactly what you're going to get from Ishii and it's always enjoyable for most people. And there's not really much nuance or variety to it, which is fine because it's fun. This kind of matches he puts on. But Evil, I, I saw some great stuff from him last year, like the Okada match in the G1 and the Ibushi matches that he had last year, I thought were tremendous. And those matches, I was thinking, yeah, this guy has taken a big step up here and he's ready for a push. But here, didn't really see that. Now, let me ask you this. So, with that being said, you know what, what you're going to get with an Ishii match. You, you know exactly what you're going to get, and it's great because everybody is in, is in full agreement. But it is the same shit that you, you get, right? You're not going to get a lot of nuance, right? Is it up to the dance partner to take it to the next level when it comes to great Ishii matches, right? Is it, is, is it that person that needs to bring the side dishes? He's bringing the fucking steak. Right, and it's going to be rubbed and delicious and cooked to perfection. But if you want a great meal, you got to bring some fucking side dishes. Is that the problem we're having here with Evil? Yeah, I think when you are looking at the best Ishii matches, it's always when his opponent is able to just bring a little twist on it right. and to just right. enhance it and bring it to that next level because. Like I say, like he can have a very good match with pretty much anybody. I'm sure he could probably drag me to a, a serviceable match. Right. But when you, you're looking at the very best Ishii matches, and I'm thinking like the Kenny Omega match they had in the G1 a couple of years ago was really special. The Ibushi match that he had in the same tournament was excellent as well. Shingo. Um, the, the Moxley match at the, in the G1 last year at Korakuen. I didn't love it as much as some people, but it was a bit different, wasn't it? Because John Moxley right. brought that kind of Western uh, brawling style to the match that changed up the formula a little bit and pushed Ishii to do something a bit different. The series he had with Taichi was fantastic because there was the dynamics of the Taichi character who at the start of the year was kind of a bit of a coward and wanted to take shortcuts, but Ishii was just cutting right through the bullshit and 
dragging out this warrior spirit from Taichi and making him look like a completely different wrestler. So, again, I'm looking for this individual uh, dynamic, something special where the match is more than the sum of its parts. And I don't think there's more than the sum of its parts here. Right. I, I, I'm, in, I'm in agreement with that. Yes. Um, and, and you look back at the people who, again, you could say the same argument, but switch out the guy, you know, Makabe, right? When, when he, and he's had great matches, very good matches with Makabe. But again, you're getting, you're getting more steak, right? You're not getting the, the side dishes that the other people can bring to the table. So, yeah, I'm kind of in agreement with that. I, I, and, and again, I think Evil could have worked a little bit better on the side dishes. That's all. And our main event here, the eighth match, was another openweight championship match with Shingo Takagi, the challenger, defeating the champion Hiroki Goto in 20 minutes, 10 seconds with the last of the dragon. And Shingo Takagi becomes the new never openweight champion. So this was the rubber match after they had a match at the G1 last year and destruction last year. They traded wins. So Shingo is now also a double champ and Goto goes back to being, dare I say, a geek. But I'm fine with this. This is this is Goto's role. I'm not going to complain about him losing the title immediately because he was there to tie a bow on what I thought was an excellent feud between him and Kenta and it helped bring Kenta to the next level and now he's bringing Shingo to the next level and that is the role of Hiroki Goto. So yep. uh, what did you think of the match? 100% agree with that. I- again, we joke about the role, right? Um, and and we poke fun at it and you know we give you the Chief J Goto and all that bullshit. But at the end of the day, this fucking Goto, you know, he takes the title off of Kenta so he could go be a bigger star. And now he drops the title to Shingo so that he can be a bigger star, you know. So there's something to be said, even though, you know, he's in in the mix uh, uh, a lot. He is that that guy, that gatekeeper role that you really want, right? You need in pro wrestling. Um, So, yes, he plays that role. To a T, tremendously. Um, he still has plenty of credibility um, to be able to do that. So, you know, tip of the cap to him. I love this match, man. I love it. And I'll tell you flat out, uh, I did my darndest to be spoiler free. Um, and, I, and, I, and I did. And I will be the first to admit that finish surprised the shit out of me. And, and, it, I popped. I couldn't. I was. I couldn't believe that they would do the switch that quickly. Um, did Did you and, not think after seeing Ishii win that it was kind of obvious that Shingo was going to win? No, no, I, I really didn't. I just didn't think that they would they would move the title that quickly. Um, I mean, we sat here on on the show last week when we did our predictions, and I think n- neither of us picked Shingo. Uh, did did it tip the cards? Yeah, maybe a little bit in hindsight now, but at the time, no. I really, I really didn't think that that was uh, that they were going to do that. Um, that. That again, move the title that quickly. Um, but I thought the match was tremendous. I mean, uh, look, <laughs> Kevin mentioned it on commentary, and and I've been saying it since uh, for a while. To me, there has been no bigger no better acquisition from a new japan point of view perspective than shingo um i again we talked about it a million times but to me he's the guy that checks every single box for every different sub genre fandom that there is um he's he's got the credibility he's got the street cred uh for the pure geeks, he's got the you know he's got. No, they turned on him. Have they really? Yeah, have I've they? seen some so, so, certain circles of Twitter. Yeah. What 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 would be the complaint? What's the complaint now? I don't know. It, it's not worth engaging with David. Okay. It's not done in good faith. I, I I I don't think it is. I mean, I don't know. I I just whatever. Uh, all right. So that throws that out the, out the window. But to me, he checks all the boxes. So, um, and and. The idea that 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 never open weight title is going to be what it was intended to be from the jump. And again, how long they stick with that idea, who knows? But to me, they got the best guy to hold that title to make it an interesting 
2020. And again, by the finger pointing and uh, all that stuff uh, and the tweets that you sent out with uh, the information about show, I mean, I, I'm all in on this. I think this will be absolutely fucking fantastic. Um, and we're guaranteed great undercards with this never title. And yeah, uh, I'm thrilled with the title change. I thought the match was great. I'm, I'm mid fours on it for uh, if you're looking for a temperature. I'm mid fours. And I thought that closing stretch was great. And I'm excited for 2020. See, Shingo is a guy who looks on the surface to be doing the similar beefy style to Ishii. But he has got such range in right. his performances where he can have that kind of match as well. But then he can also uh, have an, an athletic main event epic style match with someone like Will Ospreay. Or he can go and have a, a more sort of story driven match with someone like Tetsuya Naito as he did in the G1. So he's just got so much variety in the performances that he's able to put out. So he is just the the shining example of the full steak meal with all the garnishes, if yep. we're going to keep running with that. And as you say, well, we've got a few challenges on the table here. So first of all, uh, again, so this is coming from our, our friend of the show, Manabu, who is telling me what show was saying on Japanese commentary, that show is a guy who has been following this Never title because the same his debut in New Japan was the same show that the Never title was introduced so he's kind of connected that and he says he's been following it and he's got an uh, uh, affinity with the title and he's uh, he was accusing Shingo and saying like Shingo is trying to escape the juniors and uh, Shingo doesn't know about the history of the Never title Manabu was pointing out here that maybe show dropped the ball a bit maybe he should have made more of a splash with a challenge so if that is the the future program maybe he should have been a bit more aggressive and dynamic with making that call out for Shingo because it was quite subtle it was quite understated but who knows maybe it's going to be a long-term program it could be something with Shingo just tearing through the division and then Sho finally being the person to dethrone him and take the title off him at Wrestle Kingdom 15 who knows where it's going to go but we've got Sho set up as a future challenger we've got Ishii now has got a claim to it with a big win over Evil and we've got Hinari as well who mentioned uh, on night 2 that he would be interested in challenging so we've got a f- quite a lot of guys lining up to challenge Shingo for this title so it's definitely breathed a lot of life into a uh, division that in previous years people have accused of being stale yeah it's it's it, I mean just those three alone, that, those three alone, uh, any one of those combinations, uh, that's exciting. That's that's exactly what we want. It's certainly not stale. Uh, it's exactly what we want, and that's exactly what we you know. If we it, it, look, I think the maj- majority of our listeners, if they had the opportunity to book the never open weight title. I think a lot of people would be in this range, right? Would be, would would be, ha- we'd be having conversations about Shingo and three guys, and here's a perfect set of three guys to me. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I, it, I, I might be more excited for the Never title than I have been in 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 many years. Number one, and number two, uh, I might be. This might be the one title that I'm most excited for. Like, the the, the idea of this... Uh, look, 2020 is going to be, to me, and it feels like, the year of the undercard. Right? When you talk about the junior heavyweight title, when you talk about the never title, when you talk about even the junior tag team titles... I mean, to me, that's exciting fucking stuff. And even hey, even the never six man titles can be interesting now if they decide to, to shine a light on it. At least we got a team that is somewhat interesting and not just some just haphazard, you know, chuck together. You know, we're going to keep the belts in the closet kind of kind of team. Um, it's I, I, I 2020. Mark it down. It's the year of the undercard. Year of the fucking undercard. Because I think that these are the things, these are the moments, and these are the programs that are going to drive a lot of interest and a lot of, of, of talk and a lot of uh, match of the year talk um, when it comes to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Let's move on to night two then. The attendance was 5,690. 
compared to 6,089 last year for the headliner of Naito versus Tai Chi and 6,946, the same venue in the G1. Again, that was also Naito versus Tai Chi. So this is uh, a place where three times in recent history they have had Tai Chi in the main event. And of course, he's a, a hometown boy, but he is proven himself to be a consistent draw here. So that's something I, I guess we'll touch back on when we talk about the main event. I'll just quickly blitz through the undercard here because very similar to what we saw the previous night. First match, we had uh, Toa Hinari defeating Yota Suji in 8 minutes 16 with a Toa bottom. And I thought this one was interesting because one, it's another win for Hinari, but exactly a year ago for night two of the New Beginning in Sapporo 2019, exact same opening match, Toa Hinari defeating Yota Suji. So I don't know if that speaks to some what a, a stagnation from Hinare that he is in exactly the same spot, mm-hmm. getting the, the same win over the same guy in the same position of the cards. But again, it's another win for Hinare, so he can't uh, you know, look a gift horse in the mouth. And, and again, I think he's being heated up for the New Japan Cup. Um, second match, we had Tiger Mask, Nakanishi, Tenzan defeating Yu, Oemura, Honma, and Makabe. And I like the way in this, they, the commentary did a good job in building up this little mini feud between Tiger Mask and Uemura, which Damon, you mentioned before, but the, the fact that Tiger Mask had been tearing into Uemura backstage saying that, you know, wasn't shown enough fire and passion. And then you got this really interesting dynamic where you, you think like, well, what is Uemura going to do? Because is he going to, you know, go nuts on his mentor and start really laying into him and attacking him? Uh, because well it's his mentor and he doesn't want to hurt him but then also if he doesn't do that maybe he's going to get an earfall and a bit of a beating backstage so I thought the way they set that up was quite interesting and also Makabe had his working shoes on he was taking a lot of bumps he was working really hard to make Nakanishi look good so um, that was again that was something that was uh, notable from that match and third match we had El Fantasmo defeating Gabriel Kidd in 8 minutes 50 seconds with a frog splash I thought Gabriel Kidd was really impressive and I just, I like the sound of young British men shouting obscenities in the middle <laughs> of a New Japan pro wrestling ring. That's always going to get a pop out of me when he's like, what, what, are you, what the fuck are you going to do? Blah, blah, blah. Can't remember exactly what he said, but that popped me. And I mean, it's, it's an El Fantasmo singles match. You know what you're going to get. Very tropey. He's relying on his, his gimmicks and your enjoyment of that is going to depend on you know how much you enjoy things like back rakes and... Uh, tightrope walking on the top rope and things like that. Uh, fourth match, we have Robbie Eagles, Ishii Goto defeating Bushi, Evil and Shingo, which is a, a, a non-title match and a preview of what's going to be coming up with the never six-man titles on the line later at Krakowin. So again, yet another uh, submission win for Robbie Eagles here, who is getting not quite the rocket strapped to him, but the, the turbo backpack strapped to him, shall we say. Uh, fifth match was the special eight-man tag where we got the weird team of Taguchi, Sho, Yo, and Moxley defeating the Suzuki Gun team, Doki, Kanemaru, Desperado, Suzuki. And we got some fun interactions between Taguchi and Moxley here where Taguchi's trying to coordinate his uh, little conveyor belt line of uh, clotheslines going on in the corner and he's trying to encourage Moxley. He's like, hey, come on, Moxley, come and do it. And Moxley's just not interested at all because he's off uh, du- dueling out with Suzuki uh, on the side but yeah yet another win for Taguchi here so watch that space sick match we got a special six man tag Hiromu Sanada Naito defeating Ishimori White and Kenta this was fine I mean six good workers I enjoyed the interactions between Sanada and Ishimori so it's a match because of the weight divisions that we're not going to see but I thought they worked really well together so I, I don't know if there's ever any way for them to cross paths again in the future that will be a match I would love to see um, so let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this card. Yeah. Seventh match, British heavyweight championship match. Zack Sabre Jr. successfully defending against Will Ospreay, 27 minutes, four seconds due to a referee stoppage. Damon, I fucking love this match. This yeah. was outstanding. This is my second favorite match of the year, just behind Naito and Okada from Night 2 at Wrestle Kingdom. Just an incredibly proud moment for me as a Brit watching two British guys just absolutely tear it up and the the creativity on show from these guys they're just again talking earlier about having a match that's more than the sum of its parts this was not like half an Osprey match and half a Zack match mushed together just the way that they were able to transition from one spot to another was just so fluid and so imaginative and just perfectly executed and we had a great story with Osprey trying to hang with Zach, trying to do the, the 
grappling because you know he's got a bit of an ego on him and then he's realizing it's not working so he's trying to use his power because he is more muscular than Zach and he's trying to outmuscle him and there were quite a few times where you know he was flinging Zach around and Zach took a few nasty looking landings and I thought oh is he okay he looked like he might have hurt himself and then they were just absolutely battering each other by the end of it <laughs> and I just really enjoyed in Japanese commentary hearing the uh, Japanese commentators saying Clarky Cat so <laughs> definitely go and check that out if you didn't listen to Japanese commentary I saw this was spectacular Damon yeah this was really great I mean he, he's picking up right where he left off right he's, he's not missing a fucking beat and we're talking about Will um, yeah I, I mean you were you were never bored <laughs> You know, there is always something new and inventive and and uh, something that that was going on to help to help you get into this match. Like you weren't this was not a match where I can say I had any idea what was going on uh, anywhere else but in this ring. Um, and again, I, I'm more amazed at the fact that, yeah, it was it didn't feel like, you know, it it felt like they were working together in harmony as opposed to you're right will having his match and doing his spots and and Zach you know doing his it it, it felt like they, they were in perfect synchronization um and to me that's magical um i hear i saw people and again people texting me stuff people love to text me screenshots of tweets which I don't understand because I don't. I'm not on Twitter for a purpose. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but anyway, um, th- like I would see match of the year, and I've seen, a, I've seen a couple fives thrown around Joel. And um, again, I, I'm more impressed with the fact that 2019 was a unbelievable year. And not to say that there's much difference just because we turned the page on a calendar that we would have, you know, all of a sudden this drop off in performance. But, you know, he's Will's picking up not only where he left off in 2019. It feels to me and you tell me and again, we're only talking about two matches in a New Japan ring that we can point to. Um is he, is he going to beat like like it feels to me that these matches that I'm seeing in these are better than than some of the I would say the vast majority of the stuff that he produced in 2019 how, how can that possibly fucking be Joel first of all would you agree with that and two if you do how in the fuck could he possibly do that <laughs> Well, if we're just looking at his New Japan singles output this year, we've got the Hiromu match, right. and then we've got the Zack match, which right. are both just utterly spectacular matches, and a right. lot of people are throwing five stars at. But even if you look at Osprey outside of New Japan, I don't know if you've seen it, but I thought there were a lot of similarities between this match and a match that Will Osprey had with a guy called Dowie James from In Melbourne, uh, right? Melbourne City Wrestling Vendetta. And that match was amazing as well. And... I think he was wrestling with a busted heel in that match. So just off the top of my head, three incredible singles matches that he's already had. And we're barely into February. Right. Like, so, so once again, that, uh, even if you just said, okay, we're just going to work with New Japan in ring. Um, I have heard nothing but spectacular things about the Bel- Melbourne match. I have yet to see it. I, you know what? Maybe that's something I do today. Um, it's very good. When was that? Was that in January? Uh, let me check. There was a really good review of it from Voices of Wrestling. But it was this. It was this Scorpio year. Corp. Uh, yeah, yeah, January twenty eighth. Okay. Oh no, go. no, All sorry. Right. The, the show was January eleventh. This review was posted January twenty eighth, but January eleventh. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. So this was not too <laughs> far off the back of the, the Wrestle Kingdom. Right. Um. So so and again, people raving about that fucking match. Um. So. Again, three singles matches and three matches where people are losing their fucking skull. Uh, again, I, I, the question I ask is, take 2019 Will Ospreay and then take these three single matches. And again, three singles matches. Are those three singles matches up there with the upper echelon of 2019? And are these 2020 matches better 
than 2019's best matches. I think it's unfair to judge them at this point. Okay. Because I don't know how good Dowie James is or will turn out to be, but we know that ZSJ and Hiromu are just top, top level talent. So they are guys, Hiromu and Zaka, people that go out. And when put in big spots and big singles matches, they're going to put on excellent matches anyway. So it's a no-brainer. This is not surprising anyone that Hiromu versus Osprey and Zach versus Osprey were brilliant. Right. So I don't know if I if I want to start making comparisons at this point, but he, he's definitely not missed a step. Here's the scary part. We got, we still got New Japan Cup. And we got a weekend cut right around the corner where guys really like to shine. They really like to put on performances. Um, is What's Will's situation for WrestleMania weekend? Do we know if he is booked, is, if he is, is, is on any of these shows? Because tr- traditionally, Will has always had a, uh, a significant role in people's enjoyments of R- WrestleMania weekend. Do we know if he is... Uh, if he is available, if he's working any of these shows? Yeah, just doing a quick Google. He is set for Joey Janela's spring break and the WrestleCon Super Show. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, he is also going to be on the Supercard of Honor show. Mm. So that's three <laughs> already. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I mean, don't know, you know if he's got any uh, specific opponents announced yet, though. Okay. I'm just saying that it's February 3rd, kids, right? It's February fucking 3rd, and this is the conversation we're having. Again, we always know that there are surprise matches that come out of, you know, maybe out of nowhere that, you know, are always in the mix for match of the year and, 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 and that. But, look, again, I guess the point I want to drive home is is that he has not missed a beat so far in 2020, and it's it's February third, so this match is right up there. Uh, did you, wh- wh- where are you on the flakes? Where are you uh, on the stars? I think like four and three quarters. Just a, you need you, need you needed a bigger spot. You needed a bigger stage. Yep. You know me and my big stages. Yep. But in ring, everything was there. Probably just an like literally an ass hair short of five. And I, I, can't, I can't even put my finger on what would be missing. But you know how you feel fives? Um, and I felt, a, I felt a little bit of it. Felt a little bit of it. Um, and maybe, maybe, Damon, if you put that exact same match but in the copper box. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Then we get yeah. a five. Yeah. I, I, I think that would be something. I, here's what I hate. I hate judging a match by how the crowd reacts, but you can't deny the fact that a hot crowd helps a match. You can't deny it. Like I said, I hate to judge a match by you know what the, the people are doing in the ring. And, and right, it's like, not their fault. It's, it's out right. of the hands of the performers. Right, but to a certain degree, right? To a certain degree, it is their job, right, to get the people to to into it. But yeah, I mean, there becomes a certain point where I mean, you know. There, there are notorious crowds for being, you know, better than others. You know, the, the whole, you know, if we're using the American analogy, you know, Chicago, Philly, hot crowds, Pittsburgh, meh, you know, uh, National Coliseum. Meh. Um, so maybe it's just that. But, yeah, if that was in the copper box, I think I don't think anybody would 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 hesitate at all. Given that a five man, I Joel. They got to, not to change gears completely. The, you mean to tell me you can't headline Copper Box with that fucking rematch? They got to they gotta be working on something like that, right? You, you, you got to think that, that London or, you know, that surrounding area, there's got to be something behind the scenes that they're working on, right? Yeah, it would be promotional malpractice not to be doing something like that. Whew. I mean, again, I know the shakeup back in New Japan, and I know that pro- you know probably plays a, a significant role in that. This, this um, is a job for Annie Quilden, Damon. 
because I know <laughs> he was heavily involved in it last night. I was serious. Yeah. And he, he is not a guy... He didn't want to be at the forefront of that because he didn't want Royal Quest to be something that was co-promoted with um, RevPro. But again, if this is not being pushed forward from the New Japan side... Uh, I'm begging you, Andy, come on. you got to do it. you got to make this happen. Use everything in your power that you can to get New Japan back in the UK this year. Yeah, but we know, we know, Joel, that there are other people that might not be, that really hustled and really worked that show tremendously to help make that happen that might not be as prominent in in a role to make that happen, right? Uh, In a positive way. Right. So, right. Um, I mean, maybe I mean, I, I mean, listen, I'm not going to tell them how they run the company. What, who am I? But um, I just again, I'll just I'll just lay it on the table and say there there was a reason that 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 uh, UK show was a success. And um, maybe maybe we might want to look into why that was a success and 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 get people who made it a success a little bit more involved how about that how about we leave it at that yes i mean whoever was responsible for that idea great hats off to you but uh i mean it's just it would be criminal not to have something similar happening this year so yeah there we go those are my thoughts on that should we move on to the main event let's do it Eighth match, special singles match, because each got Okada defeating Taichi in 30 minutes, 53 seconds with a Rainmaker. Kevin Page asked on Twitter, did Joel mess his shorts after the performances the last two nights by Taichi? I mean, of course, you know what I'm going to say here. This was just <laughs> terrific. Taichi, absolutely perfect in his mini-boss role, put in a, a great performance here. Hometown crowd loved him. They were chanting for him all throughout. He, he made himself into a complete babyface, despite doing everything in his power to be the heel. And I just thought it was a great moment after the match as well when Okada's trying to lead a Tai Chi Go Home chant, but the fans were not having it and they were trying, right. let's go Tai Chi. Kevin Kelly put Tai Chi over really hard as well on commentary, bigging him up as a, a serious threat in the heavyweight division. And it's something we spoke about last week about Okada main event matches. Maybe someone needs to sit down with him and try and convince him that not all the matches have to be 30 plus minutes because I think, again, you could have shaved some time off the opening of this match with no ill effects. And and there was more shenanigans in this match than Taichi has done in his singles matches in the past. Like certainly his match against Naito at, I want to say, Power Struggle and Ishii at the G1 block finals. We saw a more sort of pure wrestling Taichi. But this is Okada. This is a different proposition. And I don't think a straight wrestling Taichi would in kayfabe be a threat to someone like Okada. So it made sense that he would be dipping into his bag of tricks and using things like trying to go for the Iron Claw and having Kanemaru coming out. And I don't think that hurt the matches as they have done with his matches in the past because I don't think he overdid it. And there was enough in the closing stretch with just that bit where they're just kicking each other in the face and uh, Taichi was using all his reversals and busting out his Kawada moves, just really heavy-hitting stuff. And there was some definitely believable near falls even though there was nothing on the line it wasn't a title match or anything but it was just really really dramatic so uh do you agree Damon? are we getting cartwheels for this where what did you think so i i i really was hoping that we would see that 16 15 minute match 15 16 minute match i really was because if it was i i really felt like this would have been a great match um and I feel like we did a lot of things to make it a 30-minute match that were unnecessary, right? Uh, to me, I'm kind of scratching my head here. It, it, right, somebody needs to sit him down, and we don't need a 30-minute epic match in a situation like this. I know it's the main event. I know, but I, I, don't, I just don't see the need for it. Again, do you want to get over the fact that Tai Chi's this heel and he's going to fuck you over uh, by any means necessary? I don't think people are even going to remember that in so much as I think people are going to remember the closing five minutes, which were fantastic, right? Um, So to me, it felt like 
like I'm, I'm kind of talking to myself saying we're doing all this just so that we can have a 30 minute match. Right? If that's what it felt like to me. That, that, that's what it felt like the purpose of that was for me. So, I mean, it was too long, number one. Um, I think Tai Chi did, did very good with what he did. I thought the last five minutes were outstanding. I think Okada is great, but I think this match could, be, could have been so much better. And I'm usually not the guy that's like, oh, fucking, you know, shave the, you know okada needs to to to, to 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 it's getting old with these 30 minutes in, in this particular case i will say that it's stuck out like a sore thumb for me the fact that it's it's gone 30 minutes and it didn't need to um good match i wouldn't go so far as to say great uh but i thought the last five were 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 outstanding yeah, I would not disagree at all on the time point. And I think Tai Chi's best matches have been those kind of sprints, like the G1 match with Shingo, the G1 match with Ishii, even the New Japan Cup match with Ishii, the Dominion match with Ishii, the, the matches against Naito. This is not something... I, I, it, again, just New Japan seems to be stuck in this mindset where it's a main event and it's got to go... Well, I, I say that, but the Never match was... 20 minutes so maybe it's just an okada thing maybe they think well <laughs> people want to see 30 plus minutes of okada in the main event so i don't know who's responsible for that but yeah it certainly if this were 20 minutes i think it would have improved the match but i still thought it was very very good indeed and again it's just there's something that manabu pointed out to me taichi doing little tributes to jumbo saruta moves okada doing inoki's moves uh so i don't know if they mean anything but just you know throwing that out there uh matt shooter on discord says do you guys see a potential babyface run for taichi not babyface in the traditional sense more so an anti-hero his matches against ishii and now okada showed me he could play that role and jdm says uh i get it's an okada rehab to overcome the odds but man taichi looks bad doesn't he post-match beat down the prior night chair shot nut shot abe kanemaru assist and he still lost uh, uh what are your thoughts david what is next for taichi i mean he's upper middle card i mean let's not make any mistakes here and and think he's top four top five guy um no right, I mean, let, 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 let change in direction here. if you are given the book how deep does taichi go in the new japan cup i would say uh i let's put it this way i think he'll go deep enough so that people can kind of get behind him to win i don't think he makes the finals but i think he could be a sem- semi-final guy i was just thinking i was gonna say could you put him in a semi-final and people would yeah. not be going huh what the fuck is this guy doing in the semis i think he has elevated himself to the point where semi-finalist tai chi sounds about right to me yeah me too i mean that's where i kind of see him um because you're not right. uh, in the new japan cup you're not burning all your big high profile matches you're not having the favorite winning each time you're not going to get a final four of like okada jay white naito and ibushi that's not going to happen so someone like taichi have a few upsets and be a, a, a hurdle coming into the semifinals would be great yep yep and, and again if, if it's 2018 you know and we're having the same conversation we're probably you know taichi fans are doing cartwheels right at the, at the idea of that um again l- l- Let's understand he had a great 2019. He'll have an important 2020. But, you know, we're not we're not taking him to the top of the mountain yet. Um, so I'm okay with the idea of him having to, you know, basically mug and and uh cause physical harm to to Okada and still lose the match. Uh after 30 minutes, mind you. Um I'm 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 kind of okay with that because me too. I think because I think there's a progression that needs to occur for Tai Chi, and he's still in that progression stage. Yes, it's one thing being Ishii clean, but Okada is a different prospect. So Correct. Baby steps. Yep, yep. And, and I do wonder, actually, they announced this Hokkaido tour in July, so we've got seven dates coming up in July. And with him being a hometown guy, I do wonder if he's going to be featured prominently during that tour. I won't be surprised at that. Um I mean, look, he's already, again, he's not, he's not going for a title, but it's Okada. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that can go, 
I don't think he can hand wave that. He'll be he'll be featured. You know, again, upper mid card guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Swordfish says heel Okada is the best, telling Taichi to go home after their match. Do you guys think Okada should go on a heel run now that he is not the champ? Okay, I don't want to have that black and white, you know, Western star. Okay, he's a bad guy now. I like the fluidity and the fact that in certain matches he can be a bit of a dickhead. I remember one that sticks to my, in my mind was in the 2017 G1 Climax when he was wrestling, I think it was against Satoshi Kojima, and the crowd were booing him, and he was just absolutely milking that and, you know, covering his ears up and screwing his face up and just being an absolute wanker throughout the match. So I think maybe something he could lean into a bit more. It would certainly make it a bit more interesting than, oh, the Rainmaker here's the guy who's IWGP heavyweight champion because I would like to see a bit of range, a bit of diversity. We talked about this before. We can't go back to doing the red-haired, broken Okada balloon gimmick but maybe him showing a bit more attitude and being a bit more of a prick wouldn't go amiss without having a fully fledged heel turn. Yeah. I mean, we're not looking for him to turn into Jay White, but you know, some of the some of the best pro wrestling moments are when established baby faces get that little bit of a prick in them. That didn't sound good, but you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, Tanahashi. That audio. Yeah, please. Cancel there you go, Dan. Cancel me. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, again, one of the greatest pleasures was uh, Tanahashi in DDT and how he was able to kind of be a bit of an asshole. Um, so, and, and you know, we, you would talk about it with Liger and you talk about it a little bit with, it's called range people. And that's a good thing, right? Um, I don't know if, if, if a full fledged heel, but again, if the circumstance warrants him being a bit of an asshole, I'm all for it. Let's look and see. We've got three Karakuen Hall shows uh, coming up. Well, starting tomorrow, Tuesday, February 4th. And some interesting matches here. So Tuesday, we've got Taguchi versus Gabriel Kidd. Uemura versus Ishimori, which I think will be really interesting. Uh, GBH, Homa Makabe versus Suji and Hinare. Nakanishi and Tenzan versus Doki and Suzuki. We've got Eagles, Ishii Goto against Hiromu, Evil Shingo. Bushi, Sanada, Naito versus ELP, White and Kenta. Main event, elimination match. This will be a lot of fun. Shoyo, Osprey, Okada versus Kanemaru, Desperado, Zack and Taichi. So that's Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, we have got Uemura versus Gabriel Kidd, Taguchi versus Suji, Honma Makabe versus Nakanishi Tenzan, Eagles Osprey Ishii versus Doki, Zack, and Suzuki, Hinara and Goto versus Evil and Shingo, that's a very beefy tag team, uh, Sho Yo Okada versus Kanemaru Desperado Taichi, and then another elimination match. We've got Bushi, Hiromu, Sanada, Naito versus ELP, Ishimori, Jay White, and Kenta. So two. Uh, different elimination matches both nights and I think both of them will be a lot of fun so if you've got nothing to do definitely tune into those and then on Thursday Suji against Uemura Gabriel Kidd versus El Phantasma again Nakanishi and Tenzan versus Hinare and Honma Shoyo Osprey versus Kanemaru Desperado Zack Taguchi Makabe Okada versus Doki Suzuki Taichi Hiromu Sanada Naito against Ishimori White and Kenta and the main event is the never openweight six man tag team championship match Bushi Evil Shingo versus Eagles Ishii and Goto so I think those look like three fun shows something to definitely have on in the background or to watch when you're uh, self quarantined in a viral outbreak so <laughs> that brings us on to uh, New Beginning in Osaka this Sunday February 9th at Osaka Joe Hall first match Manabu Nakanishi final in Osaka Joe Hall. We've got Yuji Nagata, Satoshi Kojima, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, Manabu Nakanishi versus Yusuke Taguchi, Toei Hinare, Tomwaki Homa, and Togi Makabe. Just based on the trajectory of the two wrestlers in this match, I would think maybe either Taguchi or Hinare would be picking up a win here. It feels like it, right? And it's and it is almost tradition where the guy going out the door takes the pinfall, right? Um why not? I mean, it, but how great would it, would it be if Hanari got the win here? That would be fucking great. Um, you know, let's, let's do it. Um, I know that we'll do a career retrospective of Nakanishi <laughs> um, in uh, a, a podcast to, be, to, be, to come later. But here's the thing, though. You know, look, I think he was never one of my favorites. Uh, I will say that in ring. Uh, let me just make that point clear if it hasn't been made already um even in his peak and in his prime 
he was never one that checked the Damon box. That being said, uh, he is an important piece in the New Japan pro wrestling wheel. Um, people can point to it and say it was either the beginning or the mist, middle or whatever of darker times. Um, but I think the promotion appreciated the fact that at the very least uh, they were someone that they could lean on in, in tough times and put in big spots. Was it always the most successful? Debatable, right? Absolutely debatable. But I think his mark on New Japan Pro Wrestling can't be understated. The problem is, is that it's at a time when it felt like fan interest was, you know, either at its lowest or close to its lowest um, and going down. And that's hard to, to show the, the proper respect to a guy um, who was in the midst of that. Uh, that might not have been his fault. So, um, again, I think people sh- I, 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 he's not on my top ten, right? But with that said, I think, I think, he, I think you, people owe it to him to kind of go back and rewatch some stuff. Uh, you know, some of those title defenses and him winning the title um, because they're, they're important benchmarks and milestones to kind of cross the bridge to where we are today. All right. Uh, just to point out, this is not his retirement match. It's just his final match in Osaka Joe Hall. His retirement is going to come. Yeah. Fair, yeah. Um, then second match, we got IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship match. Showing Yo versus Kanemaru and Desperado. You never know with these tag belts, do you? You think, well, Show and Yo, they've just won the belts. They're going to have a, a successful long reign here, but you just wouldn't rule out having Kanemaru Desperado win. And then I'm just thinking with the next challenger. So if Show and Yo win, the next challengers did appear to be Ishimori and El Fantasma. And are you going to have that again after you've had it at, just at the Tokyo Dome? So I think there's enough doubt in my mind I, I really don't know they can do one. it i mean they can do it they i mean they, they don't have any i mean but here's what we have at that point then we have three titles changing hands in a matter of what a handful of days you know less than a month maybe a month ish three titles yeah. that's a lot that's that's some a reason lot i see this go into a three-way with those aforementioned teams yeah, it could happen. I don't think they change the title. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with a no. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, all all signs point to a yes. To be honest with you, but uh, let's go no. Let's say successful title defense. Third match: special eight man tag: Kota Ibushi, Hiroshi Tanahashi, David Finley, Juice Robinson against Chase Owens, Yujiro Takahashi, Tangaloa, Tamatonga. So I'm assuming. Ibushi's going to be okay for this one. And yeah, it's difficult to see where this goes forward. Do you have Ibushi and Tanahashi stay together as a thing and maybe get a pin over Gorillas of Destiny and stake a claim to having a title shot and Finjuice just move into the background? Or do you have Finjuice getting a win here and they get a rematch against Gorillas of Destiny? It's Again, I just I'm tempted not to waste too much energy trying to predict the booking of the heavyweight tag division right. because it's uh, <laughs> pointless, isn't it? <laughs> How about we do something like this? How about we find a way to get these two teams, Finjuice and Tana and Ibushi, in a match? Uh, again, maybe the, again nobody's turning on anybody, but maybe there's you know some dissension. Maybe somebody's you know ego gets bruised. I don't know, uh, and it winds up being setting up. Number one's contenders match, Finjuice, uh, Tana, Ibushi. Singles or a, you know tag match. Number one contender, winner challenges Gorillas of Destiny. Can we do? Can we do that? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Probably far too logical for the heavyweight tag division, but uh, <laughs> sure, why not? Let's go for it. Right. Uh, fourth match, special tag match: Will Osprey, Kazuchika Okada versus Zack Saber Jr. and Taichi. And again, I just I I think this match would be great, and I just would love to believe that this would have 
implications for the heavyweight tag division that maybe dangerous techers get a big win and propel themselves to the front of the queue in the heavyweight tag division and maybe challenge whoever's got the titles at the anniversary show you know gorillas of destiny versus dangerous techers but it's probably not going to happen so i will just try and enjoy the match at face value for what it is which is for outstanding wrestlers yep yep yeah it would be nice to see uh zach tai chi nice little program with the tag champs yeah but i think i think we'll be that's that's uh that's wishful thinking i think Maybe these guys might pair off in the early rounds of the New Japan Cup. As I mentioned earlier, but we might get in the brackets Zack versus Okada, maybe even Osprey versus Taichi. So mm-hmm. uh, I do wonder about the permutations of the, these four guys going forward. Uh, fifth match, special singles match, Sanada versus Jay White. Uh, now this one could this be very good or it could yeah. be very bad. Yep, I, I, that's exactly my thought. It could be very good. It could be very bad. <sighs> What's even Definitely worse? Definitely going to elicit some hot takes on Twitter.com. Yeah, and here's where here, like I say that, but this could easily also be Joel, like just there and the most dull match in the world. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> um, look, I got my fingers crossed. I'm trying to be positive about this, but this one scares me a lot uh, when it comes to my pro wrestling enjoyment. Um, give me, give me a prediction. I, I don't go- know because both no. of these guys should be guys that are building momentum going into the New Japan Cup because I, I wouldn't say that they're favourites or anything, but definitely no. if if I was going to make a short list of five guys that I think could win the New Japan Cup, I think both of these guys would be on that list. So uh, what are you thinking? I'm thinking uh, like a winner of this match is challenging for a heavyweight title. That's what I'm thinking. When? <laughs> I mean, after... Because you've got anniversary show coming up, and that looks like it, you know, they usually have the heavyweight champion against the junior champion. Maybe we're going to get Naito versus Hiromu there. And then it's New Japan Cup time, so I'm confused. Mm. But why have the match then? Just a heat up to for New Japan Cup? Someone momentum going into the New Japan Cup. Hmm. You're going to burn one guy just to get momentum into the New Japan Cup? Well, Sanada got all the way to the final last year. Right. So maybe... So who can afford to take... What I'm saying is who who can afford to take a pinfall to heat up the other guy? Yeah, I wouldn't want either guy taking pinfall. Right. So why are we doing this match? Uh, Because this is going to be the match where Jay White recruits Sonata to the Bullet Club. Oh, wow. wow. All right. There we go. Uh, To me, I feel like Jay White wins this. And this is Jay White's entrance into not only heating up, but I think this is this sets up some kind of challenge somewhere along the line. I mean, that's the only positive I can think of it. Like for me, having one of these two guys lose to heat them up for the new Japan Cup. You know what I mean? Like, that just seems like we're really going all out here, but that, which is completely unnecessary. You want to heat him up for a title shot? I, I, I kind of see that. Um, so I think the winner of this match is going to be in the ring somewhere, pointing at a belt and challenging. Sick match, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. Hiromu Takahashi defending against Ryu Lee. Uh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be great, I'm sure. Uh do you think we get a Phoenix Plex uh, <laughs> executed or a, a tease of it? I think tease. I think a definite tease. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I don't know if you'll get it, but I, I think a tease. Yeah, this match is going to be fucking fire. It's going to be great. Uh, we know that. Um, and I don't. I think Hiromo wins. Um, but yeah, um, I... Like again, anytime these two are in the ring, it's fucking amazing. So I'm just I'm just looking forward to the uh, the, the uh, spectacle, and I think it'll be great. And I think it might be match of the night. Seventh match, IWGP US Heavyweight Championship match, a match I feel like I've seen several times already. John Moxley defending against Minoru Suzuki, and well, I think we know what to expect here. It's going to be yeah. uh, an ugly, nasty brawl. These guys are going to be slapping each other and forearming each other, and there might even be some weapons involved, and it's going to be violent. 
Yep. And I, hopefully I'll hear uh, Kevin Kelly yell out, Jesus Christ Almighty, once again. <laughs> <laughs> which had me laughing on my fucking couch when uh, Suzuki was uh, mixing it up right in front of uh, the, the announcers, <laughs> yelling at yelling at Gambino. Uh, yeah, I mean, brawl outside the ring, lots of furniture, fun stuff. It'll be a nice. It'll be a good brawl. I'm, I'm excited for it. Probably be a lot of grappling as well. I think they could do a bit of brawling and then a lot of submission grappling because, as I said, Moxley is someone who who likes his his roots, his things like that. So, uh, yeah, that might be a, an understated aspect to this match uh, now in terms of the result if Suzuki wins then we have a US champion who can wrestle mm-hmm. in the United States mm-hmm. I know that might seem like a crazy idea or do we have Moxley continuing to be United States champion and holding it and you know maybe then you've got another big match that you can another title defense you could run at Sakura Genesis so I guess my question would be is what is in the US in the coming weeks, I know we got Tampa, right? Um, and then after that, what is what is? I know we got summertime, uh, up, 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 rumored to be in Texas, like J- June, July ish. Um, when's that rumored Chicago, Detroit, Toronto loop? <laughs> when's that i guess my question is is like when like is it important to be defending the u.s title in the u.s at this point <laughs> you look at the numbers from this new beginning usa tour and you fucking right. think so Who fucking right? right 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 so i mean it depends on what is on the docket right so if there's no shows in the u.s then yeah moxley keeps the fucking title okay but and I don't think that there are many around the corner aside from that April one, right? Uh, in, it in, just, it just seems to me that, like that the company think that the US title is more valuable as a mid-card title in Japan than it is a title for these shows in the States. Look, I, I, I can't answer that. Only, I mean, again, there was some issue, you know, people were saying, hey... You know, they were kind of put in a corner with Lance and they just got the title off of him and all that stuff. But I don't know if that's true or not, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I think June is the next tour for U.S. Um, yeah, if, if they were put into a corner with that, you put it on Juice. You yeah. Juice have a title and then he defends it in this tour. It just, they could have done, it's their title. You know, it's their company. They put whatever they want. If they wanted to have that U.S. title defended on this tour that's just passed, they would have done it. But they didn't. And I'm asking myself, why? What is the future of this US title? And I genuinely don't know. Because yeah. I see they, they obviously see a lot of upside in having Moxley hold it as an attraction and a big draw in Japan. But again, you could also go in the direction of having Suzuki hold it and defend it in the States, which I think would also be a big attraction. So we're in this novel position, Damon, where the US title seems valuable. <laughs> right. But again, I don't, at least from what I understand, it doesn't look to be anything United States wise, unless they do something with Ring of Honor. I don't know. I mean, who knows? But um, there's there's no reason for Moxley to drop it because there's no urgency to have it defended in the States. Not that it was a consideration before. So I say Moxley uh, holds on to it. OK, I will sign off on that as well. I, I, I agree with your logic there and then main event eighth match IWGP heavyweight and IWGP intercontinental double championship match Tetsuya Naito defending against Kenta Kenta's done everything in his power to be the 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 biggest fucking heel honestly it feels like in the in in pro wrestling right and the company has done that as well so you cannot criticize well you can but you'd be wrong uh, the effort that has been put forth in making him a fucking shitbag heel um i'm a little concerned about the match um i i don't know if we're going to get that epic new japan pro wrestling main event heavyweight title match here uh i think i think they have to keep this short they can't do 30 minutes right joel they're not tell me they're not going to have Kenta and Naito go 30 minutes because if they do, it's a mistake. This has got to be – he's got to set a new standard here, and they really should think about shaving off a lot of time on this match. Well, if you look at the last 
IWGP title main event match they had at Osaka Joe Hall at Dominion last year, which was Okada Jericho, it was a bit shorter, wasn't it? It was, what, about 25 minutes? Yep. So something in that ballpark you think would be better here? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I think when you get past that, I would even like a, like 20 if possible, but like you get past that mark, and I think that middle ground is going to get a little... That, that, that Kenta on offense might be <laughs> might might be a little bit of a slog uh, to fill in the time. So if they keep it short, er, short er, this could be really good. Uh, my fear would be if I hear a call of fifteen minutes, I'm going to see us going to a finish pretty soon. Right? Um, don't make this a thirty minute fucking epic match because I think they're missing the mark if they do that. Naito wins. Okay, I was going to say, give, what percentage chance are you giving Kenta here? Ah, uh, less than 20. Okay, that's still quite high, but I was going to say, it's a new beginning. It's a place where you usually have big shocks in the IWGP heavyweight title scene. But, yeah, I just... I cannot not. imagine them doing it. They can't surely do that. Not. Right, right. This whole thing was about giving Naito this win and, and again, giving him a bigger taste of this title and, and, and being the top guy in air quotes, um, for a bit of a longer run, right? That was the whole purpose of this. So we got to take off. A, it, that would just, that would be the worst thing they could fucking do is have him drop that belt. Watch him drop the belt. <laughs> that would be We've got our cold open ready for next week, at least. We sure do. All right, I can't do many questions. Um, so maybe a handful, because I got a hard stop in like about two or three minutes. Uh, okay, Discord then, Atari Legend says... At the start of the 2010s, the worst take I personally remember on American wrestling being Wade Keller repeatedly suggesting that he thinks Dolph Ziggler could be the next Steve Austin. I'm wondering what the worst take either of you heard on anyone in New Japan over the last decade. <laughs> Shibata's coming back. <laughs> Shibata, <laughs> Shibata's winning G1. Um, any of any, any Shibata fill in the blank is the worst take. Can you remember any about failed push? I'm, I'm thinking like guys like Cody Hall. Or oh, yeah. Kitam- well, I suppose Kitamura was that was a, a strange one, but any any guys that people were saying, oh yeah, this this guy's going to be the future of the company, and that just ended up being a whole lot of nothing. Hmm. I have to think about that. We probably we probably have to go back a bit. I, I want to, you know, not, you can't put like the kingdom in that, right? That's you know, we're not doing that. Um, look, I think it goes along more along the lines of the guys who people shit on in the beginning and then turned it around, like AJ or even Okada. You know, when Okada showed up, it wasn't like people were like, oh, my God, this guy's the savior of New Japan Pro Wrestling. It, it, it that wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it went over like a fart in church is what it did. Um, so, I mean, I think the other way around, you could probably point more examples of, um, but guys who, you know, they, they push down your throat um and didn't turn out um i'd have to think about that i had to go back nothing comes right out of the gate top of my head undoubtedly dean says odds that zack saber jr knocks okada out of new japan cup i can't get that idea out of my head i'm thinking he then goes on to meet naito at dontaku they do have this uh, kind of pattern where the losing finalist of the new japan cup challenges for the title at dontaku because remember they did that with Farley in right. 2017 and they did it with Tanahashi in 2018 they did it with Sanada in 2019 so maybe that could be a spot for Zach to get to the finals in the New Japan Cup lose but then get a, a title challenge at Dontaku yeah I mean the patterns are there so I, I would not be surprised at seeing that at all yeah uh, Eric Missio says ZSJ is an all timer for me, but he didn't even rate on that recent best foreigners poll you mentioned. Is it because he's a despicable heel, or do you feel many Japanese fans don't connect with him? Yeah, I didn't think about that at the time, but he was a, a notable omission from that. I don't know if it was just because in 2019 he had a relatively quiet year um, compared to the other guys. What would you think on that? I think a lot, all of that plays a factor. I mean, let's be truthful here. Right now in Suzuki Goon, it's Suzuki. Would you put Zach next? I probably wouldn't. I'd probably put Tai Chi next and then Zach, right? I mean, that, it, you're, you know, you're third rung in the promotion uh, or in, in, in the faction. So, uh, and being a dickhead heel and, you know, maybe not having the, me- the best win-loss record in the past year. 
uh, even though he was, you know, Mr. Submission guy the year before, fucking tapping everybody out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that that all of those things, all those factors may have played a factor in that. Uh, Jay Reezy means says, at what point do the LA Dojo Young Lions get out of black trunks? Shouldn't Ren Narita have new gear? Shota has new gear. I was thinking that as well. I keep expecting to see Ren Narita debut his new excursion gimmick. And we're just getting the same old Young Lion Ren Narita. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 you know I, I, I wish I had an answer. I know the idea of of graduating into a new, fresh gear is a significant thing, but maybe they're just waiting. And, you know, it could be a fact that they have something big planned for him and they don't want him wearing something else. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I mean, I'd be pure guessing and speculating, but, but yeah, it's noticeable. All right, one more. I got one more. Uh, Insider 0607 says, do you guys know what happened to Taka Michinoku? Did New Japan quietly get rid of him for the cheating scandal? I, I believe that's yeah. what happened, yes, because that apparently is quite a big deal in Japan and brings, uh, you know, it was quite a serious scandal. So that appears to be why they're not using him anymore. Yep, swept swept under the rug a little bit, you know, uh, out of sight, out of mind, and hopefully that, you know, that's 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 that. They, uh, they're not going to use him until they feel that it's, it's a... Uh, a comfortable situation for sure and everything's been settled so yeah that's basically it all right well that's all we got time for today you can go to redcircle.com forward slash shows forward slash super dash j dash cast if you want to give us some money for all the uh, great content we deliver to you for free every week and thanks to our sponsors manscape.com again use promo code super j cast to get 20 percent off and free shipping and that helps us out a lot if you do that because they are likely to re-up with us if they see people buying it uh you can visit our discord the link to that is in the show notes uh, prowrestlingtees.com forward slash superjcast if you want to get one of our cool t-shirts massive thanks to editor Dan you can see his work and his music on YouTube and Twitter at Escape the Box UK uh, subscribe to the Voices of Wrestling podcast network give us a five snake review on iTunes follow us on Twitter at superjcast thank you everyone for listening and goodbye